on here. <clears throat> okay, back with another live stream. Hopefully this one's going to work this time. It's showing green right now. <clears throat> That's the third start <clears throat> on this one. <laughs> so I've got another fault uh, fault start <clears throat> that I'll have to delete. I already deleted the others. <clears throat> Actually, this is, the, this is the fourth for this video. So anyway, <clears throat> and I started coughing and everything before. i got a cough drop now. <clears throat> but I've got a lot of drainage a lot of trouble going on here. <clears throat> but I think the mostly I was, my throat was still kind of, you know, raw from talking too long. I don't talk hardly at all for days. I'm on the computer all the time, you know. And then when I started to make videos, I start talking. So <clears throat> my voice doesn't last very long. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> but uh, let's see. What am I going to do? Okay, let's get on the desktop. This is going to be a bit different than the uh, previous video about the phone's batteries. That was something I hadn't planned, but it happened. You know, I went over there to check the phone, and there it was. <clears throat> the battery also went out. So, this is Chromium Web Browser, which is the granddaddy of Chrome, if you didn't already know that. <clears throat> and um, this is the web browser that Chrome, for you know, Google Chrome, is built on. The, the, you know, it's open source and it's built on the code of Chromium. And uh, <clears throat> they operate pretty much just, I can't really see any difference in the way they work. <clears throat> I'm sure there's some difference in the back end, the part we can't see. But this right here, <clears throat> what's going on here is, uh, I'm about to cough like crazy again. <coughs> 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 <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so uploaded 34 of 105 videos. Well, <clears throat> it's not a real upload like from my computer to YouTube. This is transfers from Google Fo my videos I have on Google Photos to YouTube. Now, I started this <clears throat> at about this time last night, uh, yesterday morning, or whatever it is. This is morning now, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, it's been running. This machine's been running, trying to do this ever since then. And it really got to that point and quit. I, I guess it's quit. It doesn't say it's quit, uh, but I have a feeling it, <clears throat> it has. Um, there are, um, this is the new, I guess this is the new, I don't know. It seems like they have a beta and then a alpha is what it seems like. It seems like they have two new interfaces going now. Um, but this animation here, that's just an animation. I thought it was like actual, maybe it's showing you clips of the video as it went through, but it's not. Or at least it's not on that one. See, that one still says processing. And <clears throat> these are uh, some really old videos from 2008 that are MPEGs. Uh, and I did, during all this, I just found out that uh, they don't take MPEGs anymore. they got to be MP4s. You got can't take the older versions. But uh, so all my MPEGs, none of them have uh, worked. And there's, but there's some, I'm going to go down here to the bottom. These ones that start with, you know, the name that starts with a vid, I never did rename them uh, from what the uh, camera named them. <clears throat> I did, those were videos I made right on the camera without streaming or anything on the phones. Bunch, most of them work. They should all work, but see, there's two in a row that didn't. They're still saying processing. And uh, I don't know why they're not working, but I kept hoping that maybe if I left it long enough, they would uh, at least those would finish. But they haven't changed one bit. I'll show you what it looks like over here in my in your videos section. It's on live. Okay. <clears throat> oh, it usually shows you your live video that you're doing right now when you go there. But uh, it will on your home page, at least. I know that. But so go to uploads. Okay, so it shows which ones have worked and which ones haven't. You can play them. Oh, and here's something. <clears throat> this is, uh, let's see. This is one of the ones that I really care about. Those little DSC and those little moves. Uh, .mov. Uh, that's QuickTime, I think it's called. Uh, one of the older formats of the camera that did that did only do like 30 second videos those are actually already up there and surprised it didn't pop up and say they're already there you know and you can't upload them it probably would if it ever got finished 
but I think what it is is it's just sitting there because I don't know why it's not. I'm going to go through a bunch of screenshots in a minute and show what all I've gone through trying to get these things done. Uh, but anyway, here's one, <coughs> and here's what happens when you click on the play button. This is why it says video is still being processed. Video quality may improve once your processing is complete. Now, that's something you see quite often, and uh, generally it works. Everything's fine once it gets done. But <clears throat> what's throwing me on for it in loops is that it's happening just like that right there. <laughs> it's happening in the... Um, just make, just make sure everything's still working, my sound and everything. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, it's been happening for basically 24 hours now. Nothing's changed. Um, I was thinking that I needed to really figure out which ones worked and which ones didn't before I stopped that because, especially of these ones... Uh, that really should have worked. <clears throat> the ones that are MPEGs here, these older ones, I, I, <clears throat> I'll just uh, click all of them, delete them. And you know, you can't do that in here though. You can't click a whole bunch of different videos and then there's no delete button anymore. You got to go back to the classic studio to do that. I'm going to click on that. So I'm tired of telling them why, why it doesn't work and why I don't like it. There we go. Now this one, you can click on all these videos. It's also bigger and you can just read it better. <clears throat> and then you can uh, uh, you can delete them. I won't do that till I quit that. I was fixing to do it just to show it. But anyway, I, I did them. I know for sure it works because I did it uh, yesterday before I started this. Because what it is, these videos about my blazer that I made when I was doing some work on my blazer in 08, I, ha I uploaded them several years ago. <clears throat> I kind of hung on to them for two or three years and didn't upload them because I was I wanted to edit them and make them all real nice and fancy and everything. But I never, I thought, well, I'm never going to do it. <coughs> it's an <coughs> epic. <coughs> well, I spent seven days. <coughs> uh, you know, normally you can spend four hours to a day, you know, replacing the wheel bearings on that blazer. And of course, when I was younger, I could do it a lot quicker. But, uh, so, uh, well, I'm really old now because this was in 08 and now it's 2019, so imagine. But, uh, anyway, I spent a week, let's see, maybe that, I still can't remember if that week was in wheel bearings. I worked on the tail tailgate uh, crank mechanism and the wheel bearings. I don't remember. Yeah, I think I, I've got a week's worth of videos just on the wheel bearing and then <clears throat> some more days, I don't know how many, on the, uh, um, blank here <clears throat> I'd like to take screenshots of every single section of this but uh, <clears throat> it doesn't have the full name anyway so it's not going to help that way oh this is in the old interface now or no that's the one I was in I think <clears throat> yeah I guess this may be the old interface and that's how I did the upload I thought I did it in the other one yeah some of the longer names you're not going to see them I just want to know which, mostly which ones of these. Let's go ahead and do it. I was worried that my machine couldn't handle all those screenshots while I was uh, making a video. And I thought, well, let's just, I'm going to go through them slow and painfully so that I will know. <clears throat> I need to highlight something so that I can. Shoot, that made it. So I'll know where I was at. I can tell like that, but usually what I do is just highlight something on, at the bottom of the page, and then I'll have to just watch the last one and do it that way. <clears throat> so I can go back and look through these <clears throat> screenshots to see what... The main thing I'm concerned about is... The uh, <clears throat> the ones that should have worked. These, I'm just going to delete every one of these, even if there's something there, and uh, do it again. 
but I thought the video would be helpful for me to remember, have a record of what I need to do and what I don't need to do. But I also thought it'd be other people have probably ran through these problems too, and I thought I would share what what I've discovered. I'm not even reading this anymore. I'm just going through the motions here. And see, it got well. See, okay, I have. I didn't explain how I started out with all this, and some of these ones that I really didn't need to upload again. All these little very short. There was a little. These were off of a camera that would only do 15 second shot silent videos. I had two two different cameras that I used to use years ago, <clears throat> and um, real cameras. I'm actually only using phones now. Yeah, but these. They're they're really more tricky to figure out which one's good and which one, you know. You need to know which one worked and which one didn't because I believe I will leave these. I'm not going to re up redo these. They're bigger. They're bigger files and that take a long time to upload. But I don't. <coughs> these other ones, these MPEGs, they're really short. See, these are MP4s. They should work. <coughs> <coughs> and they're in my Google Photos <coughs> in an album that I made. You see, what I did was. You could do this a long time ago. Uh, that's, how I, that's how I originally uploaded. I didn't have these videos uploaded, if I remember right. But the other ones, the older ones, they were all uploaded. They've been up for years. And that's how I got them up there is by uh, selecting the whole. The whole uh, you could either up select you know, one or several files by holding down Control and Alt and, or Alt. You know, Now I've lost my track. <clears throat> or you could uh, upload the whole album. And then I thought it went away and you couldn't do it anymore. Well, yesterday I accidentally clicked on the top left corner of the icon for the album and it selected and it put a check mark there, like which it does when you're editing the album or something. And so I couldn't see anything else to do, so I just clicked on open. It didn't say upload or okay or whatever. It said open, I believe. Well, it just instantly started uploading them all. So I thought, well, okay, that's what I'd like to do anyway. I don't want to have to. Go through there and select every one of them one at a time. <clears throat> so yeah, these two, still three, right there say processing. There's another one. It's just like hit and miss. <clears throat> now this is just ridiculous. Now, I don't know that this has anything to do with this interface. It might, this new interface. I don't want to go through it all again. I could like get in the old, inter make sure I'm in the old interface. Actually, I think... What I had done, when I just switched to the classic interface, I think it changed both pages I had open to the classic interface. So, um, I think what I'll do, <clears throat> I kept debating about this, but I'm going to say, I don't know if I want to change, oh, public, private, or unlisted, what do I want? I like to keep them in order. What I'm trying to do is get them in order. And put them in playlists in order, you know. And those ones with just the numbers, it's going to be hard to get them in order. I didn't name them, you know, uh, before. that. Well, they got automatically uploaded to Google Photos from, straight from my phone. I have a chance to rename them. And it takes forever to do that. Now, on my computer, I can rename them with a renaming tool. Give them numbers, you know, like these other ones. They have a 1 in front of them. No two and so on. So now this is all mixed up on those. The ones in Google Photos are all screwed up. I don't know how they got so screwed up. But I went well they were my backups. I had my backups. I have a two USB backup drives now. And uh, I copied them from my old old computer. I have backup drives on my old computer. And but to, uh, yesterday or day before whenever all this started, I went ahead and went through and fixed all the naming and made it the way I wanted it. But of course, these are names are the old names from Google Photos, and they're really a mess. So I, uh, only reason I I really didn't want that, but I didn't want to have to since uh, transcode every one of those to MP4s. I did one, and it worked, <clears throat> so I can do that. But I thought, well, once it started uploading, I just thought, well, let's let it do it. If it'll work, see, let's see if it'll take them. <clears throat> I didn't think it would really take all that long, especially when it started out real fast. It was going fast. And I went to bed and just let it run. So what I'm trying to figure out now is I didn't really want them to be, don't necessarily need them to be private, but I don't want them to be public. I don't know if it matters, uh, the ones that worked, you know. <clears throat> I, 
what happens if I open, load, upload a bunch of videos that don't have good names and descriptions, and I just it's an overwhelming task, and I don't get back and do them one at a time. I do everything I can, and you know, when it's a bulk upload, I try to bulk set up everything. But you can't do the descriptions and everything in bulk, except for I uh, see the default descriptions and all that. That's in there, but they're not accurate as to what the video is. But if you're, at least your title doesn't describe what your video is about, then that was the thing. That's why all those, about 100 videos, I think I deleted around 100 videos uh, <clears throat> that had been up for several years, and most of them had got, some of them still had zero views. Because while well, I screwed up, I set the uh, <clears throat> default name. I was, I forgot, I'd done it before. Anyway, I found the section, set the default name, and I thought, I, I thought it would say like I don't know what I thought I guess I thought it would say like I put something like you know repairs on the 76 my Don 76 Blazer and I thought it would like give them a number or something but it didn't it gave the exact same title to every single one of those 100 videos and I just never several years now I never did get back to <clears throat> to uh, trying to straighten the mess out you know and so they really never that you know goop YouTube's uh, algorithm couldn't tell the difference between them, and people couldn't, if they found them in the search results, they all look like the same video. They probably didn't show up in the search results. So, these videos that have just a vid, vid so-and-so number so-and-so, they, they'll actually do better than one that's named, I found out, <laughs> than one that been a bunch of videos that have the same name, even though they're all different videos. <clears throat> so, uh, trying to fix that. Um yeah, I think I'm going to say publish. I want to pay pub. I don't want to lose. Uh, I don't want to have to go right now. I, all of them that have been uploaded and succeeded, I can publish them as public or unlisted or private. <clears throat> Let's see. I'm going to do unlisted like I've been doing. I did some more the other day. I'm going to leave them all unlisted so that it tells me they still need work. I guess for now. And then if I don't, uh, it's not responding, is it? <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> I hope I didn't mess up. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to, there's my screenshots. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah, Chrome has jumped up in its, well, that's OBS. Chrome, yeah, it's jumped up in my resource usage. Now my system's getting, yes, getting quite overwhelmed. Unresponsive. I'm going to try to wait one time because I don't want to force close the page if I don't have to. I may have to. This may be the thing that caused it to become, and I think this is ridiculous having animations on all those. I mean, you anytime have you ever seen? <clears throat> um, those are probably gifts, but back in the days when gifts were real popular, anybody had too many gifts on their page, it would overwhelm. You would use up all of, all your CPU in no time, just like Flash. They did that before Flash even came out. So see, I got no no recourse here. Exit the page. Okay, now let's hit reload. Okay, well, I didn't get to do that. I guess I should if I, if I would have just clicked. Uh, I'm going to get to my videos. I don't like, you know what, I'm closing Chrome and I'll just do it in Firefox. I don't, uh, I don't like Chrome one bit. I don't like the way it works. And, well, let's go to Firefox. I was going to go ahead and show these screenshots, but let's go to and talk more about all this but let's go look and see what's happened first so if they're not published i mean it, i didn't lose them or anything they're just not published so um but i wanted to i've ran this computer all night and all day i made other videos and uh, left that going in the background hoping something would happen uh, and now i'm so i need to reboot the computer i mean it's working fine so far i can't believe it's gone this long it usually doesn't but uh okay now i'm gonna i've got a shortcut in my i don't like leaving that up there it bugs me so i always make it come and go well, let's go to my videos <clears throat> and uh <coughs> now this will be the uh i guess this is the new beta inter you know, of the interface i don't like how they split it like you know i i Still having to remind myself to look in the right section. And you and at first, when you'd search, like I'd be searching for my certain videos to 
put them in his playlist for one time. I was kind of organizing my videos and I, and I wasn't finding videos that I knew were there. And then I realized, oh, I have to click live. Well, now, the, yesterday, the other day, when I searched, it, it didn't. It worked. You search across all your videos, which makes more sense to me. But you still, if you want to, like now, if I want to see my latest live video, I have to click on live. It's absolutely no help. It's just, just more, you know, one more thing to remember that you got to do. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is the one I'm making right now. That's what I was saying a minute ago. I don't know why it didn't show up in Chromium, but it shows up in Firefox. And usually Chrome Chromium works better in YouTube than Firefox does. Some things flat won't work. But uh, anyway, yeah, they still have this little animation of processing. Still being processed. Now, I don't think, now, now that tells me that I really don't know what to do because I don't want to delete them. I mean, maybe it would be a day or two before it, with that many videos. I don't know. You know, you'd think as powerful and as many servers as YouTube has, you know, it would not be. After 24 hours, you should be done. But it is not throwing up errors. So I don't think I'll go through and just delete them all until I'm sh sure. At least now I won't have to have my computer running. And maybe this is something that it doesn't say. There's something I, I didn't think to mention does not say on that upload page anymore. It used to say, don't close this page. Don't close your browser. But, you know, and it, and if you do, that's why I did it in Chrome. But, well, two reasons why I did it in Chrome. I could have done it in, it won't, <clears throat> okay, that whole thing of when you click, well, I can just do that. <clears throat> yeah, see, here's, here's upload video, upload video beta, and then there's the cl classer, classic creator. That's what I'm talking about. Let's see what this looks like. I don't think it's going to go looking like classic. Well, yeah, it did. Okay. So if you uh, if you say import, then it says you got to sign in. Click now. I've got my I've got my password in my browser saved in my browser, but it just does this in Firefox for eight months or more now. So I have to use Chrome to do that. I can't do that without you and use. Uh, and it doesn't see nothing tells you. I just know from you know twenty years of experience <laughs> uh, using uh, you know browsers uh, that to go ahead and try another browser if something happens. <clears throat> so uh, before Chrome ever came out or Firefox ever came out, I learned that with uh, <clears throat> uh, Netscape and Internet Explorer and some of those others, <clears throat> but. Uh, so I've always kept two to three browsers on my system. I just have, well, I have three. I have Firefox uh, developer version. I use that for, for when I'm editing my website. And I don't put, you know, well, I think I do have the ad block on there. But I don't put anything else on there that, well, I want it to show up the way I built it, you know. I don't want anything. <clears throat> uh, I want to see, you know, the ads and everything else. Uh, so I use that when I want to look at a site I've built, you know, known websites and stuff. But, uh, or if you're working on your uh, blog, uh, I used to, use, also it helps with that. You're, I don't, don't, I don't uh, post on my blog was like I used to, I used to do it almost every day. Google blog, you know, <clears throat> but uh, anyway, yeah, okay, that tells me, finally shut that and those still look the same. I thought maybe they would start throwing up errors as soon as I closed Chromium. But uh, I'm reloading it to see. <coughs> it says it's processing and usually when it says that it means it I have seen them process on something for a day day maybe almost about almost about two days so I'm not going to do anything then I guess I'll wait I didn't want it to all be you know I deleted see I deleted 100 videos and uh, because you can't re-upload them until you delete them and so uh I'm anxious to get them back up there. But if this works, then the bad thing will be I'll have some funky names I'll have to manually one by one fix. Uh, and I had already fixed them with, the, you know, file renamer. Um, <coughs> since let's close the browser now. I don't really need that. I'll send, I'm talking about file renamers. <coughs> and uh, this is Fedora Linux. This is Fedora 28. I haven't upgraded this system yet. It's all, everything's set up the way I want it. Two my two 
uh, favorite follower namers are Kerry uh, name and uh, Valkyrie name. And each one kind of has different features that are useful, but uh, you can add files that way <clears throat> or you can uh, right click in, I, in, in your file manager. I use Crusader. Uh, if you right click in Crusader, well, actually, you can highlight them in Crusader. I just open it. And it wouldn't hurt for me to look and see that my vi my backup video is working and all that anyway. Well, let's open it. Let me check and make sure my sound's still working up there. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so see if I wanted to rename these right here, then uh, you highlight them. And uh, <clears throat> actually, uh, this is the way I would want it. And then, so I didn't say I didn't want those spaces in there, which I usually don't. Uh, go to find and replace, add space, and replace it with a dash. And then you've got three dashes in, in there. You don't want three dashes in a row. So we'll say three dashes replaced with one dash. And that's a real cool, fast, easy to use uh, renaming tool. And I'm just going to apply it, do that. <clears throat> okay, so those were, those were had different names because I made them with uh, Shutter instead of the genome screenshot. or I guess it's called mate screenshot tool that's built in. And I always set my system up when I hit print screen on the keyboard, it does a screenshot. That's what I was doing earlier. Yeah, this is my video that of what I'm making right now. Yeah, it's doing just fine. Okay, so now I still have a, I had already previously opened these up. So let's see, which way do I want to go? Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to go to the right. Okay, <clears throat> now these, um, can I go full screen? No, I want to go full screen, probably with F11. Yeah. Okay, I think that leaves my, yeah, that leaves my <clears throat> normal. I can still move around the, no, that is the full screenshot. So see, nothing's working. Okay, <clears throat> so, um, these are screenshots of my whole desktop. <clears throat> Now, some of it I may not remember when I see it, but uh, I need my mouse as my pointer here. <clears throat> okay. Um, first video of that um, set of the. Um, let's see. Yeah, keep, keep, okay, keep, please keep the page open until you're done, right? That's what you see when you upload a video. Well, you used to see that even when you were doing that on. Uh, Transferring files from <clears throat> Google Photos to YouTube. And it was not there. I checked, double, triple checked. Could be that it never was there and I forgot, and it will actually break your transfer. <clears throat> but, um, you know, used to most sites, if you were doing a transfer like that from one server of theirs to another, they would uh, <clears throat> tell you, you, you can go ahead and go surf the internet. Just check back later, and some of them would actually email you when it was done. I think YouTube, I swear YouTube used to, well, no, YouTube didn't used to have photos. <clears throat> well, you, they always had docs. But anyway, I don't know. I remember that on, I used to use, <coughs> I don't, <coughs> I used to use, uh, well, um, <coughs> I used, to, I've, there's several services I've used, you know, long before, <coughs> Stuff, stuff I used before YouTube even came out, you know, but uh, for photos and videos, there were some video sites, uh, some sites that would take videos before YouTube. But uh, Yahoo used to have all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, and uh, anyway, um, I was trying to remember the ones I used. So anyway, so here we are. Um, the first one. I tried to upload, um, okay, I started my upload, uh, my transfer. Okay, it did say that at the beginning, and, but it went away at some point. Oh, okay.
Okay, so this is the very beginning of the transfer. This is not an upload. This is the very beginning of the transfer of the, um, <clears throat> now this is helpful for me, <clears throat> of the uh, files. And this was, like I said, I just clicked. Um, I just happened to accidentally hit the top left corner instead of the center of that icon for my uh, album, you know, of videos <clears throat> in Google Photos. You know, I clicked on I showed you, you know, you know, you go upload and you select. And I showed you how it didn't work in Firefox. I didn't try to, and I didn't show you how, because I didn't want to mess up anything on that page that I, I didn't show it in uh, Chrome, how it looks when it does work. But this is the next step after it gets going. But you click right there on the little deal, and you, you, you probably have seen it. But anyway, uh, and you, you still, instead of uploading a file, you select transfer files from photos. Anyway, I, I clicked on the top left of that icon, and it put a, it put a check mark in there. It's like, hmm, that's different than what I remember, because usually it just opens it up into the folders and lets you select the fi uh, files you want. And for a while, I thought it would only let you, let you do one anymore. But um, it will let you do, uh, you know, use control and all, <coughs> or shift and all, <coughs> uh, to select multiple files. You can select multiples with shift, or one, or, or pick and choose like skip a file and pick the next one with control. <coughs> you hold down control while you click, or shift while you click. But uh, but it it, it uh, what it did was it put that check mark on the top left corner of the uh, album icon, and then when I clicked open, uh, it just started uploading. This was where it took me. So it does say leave the page open. So, and I remembered that, but I didn't remember seeing that. But I remembered this from the past, so I didn't dare close it. So I went and I looked over here at uh, <coughs> the videos, and this is what I saw. Uh, let's look at the time. That's it. Uh, this is when it was happening. Oh, dang it. How am I supposed to? I don't want it to. It should, it's showing the programs. Only thing I know to do is leave full screen and then go back into it. There we go. So don't put your mouse up there. So that was uh, 3.35 a.m. <clears throat> so I guess that's when I started. It wasn't 2. It 2.30. It was 3.30. Uh, so, uh, and then it, right after that, at three thirty, still three thirty-five, I went over here to look just to check the check out what was going on in the, you know, upload section, and everything's showing the little icons, you know. Um, let's see, let to see if that file showed to be private. There were some. Whoops, rolled my mouse wheel and did that by accident. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> anyway, that's what it looked like in there. Um, oh, and this was the problem I had years ago when I originally, and any time I tried to do a whole album, uh, you will get that message before, you, you know, it's it's not even really going good yet. See, it's still, it's only a minute later. Uh, page unresponsive. A script. Uh, script error, you know, wait for it to come responsive, you want to wait, you want to exit the page. So I knew this from experience. I've got several videos on how to, uh, how to make, you know, upload a whole album <coughs> or a whole bunch of files by basically sitting here and watching it and clicking wait. <laughs> and uh, it's a real pain, but it used to wouldn't even work in Chrome, but it could get it, it would work in, because uh, it would take so long in Chrome, it would just kill itself but for this message to come up. It would come up, you'd see it, and before you could click on it, it would kill the page automatically itself. <clears throat> but Firefox, you could do it, and that's how I got them all up there in the first place. It was a real pain. But so it's, it was, I was like, oh, crap, it's doing that again. <clears throat> years later, you know, years later. And um, so, um, but, it, it, you know, it just came up, and I kind of leisure just took me a minute to figure it out, you know, a little bit to figure it out, not a whole minute, but <clears throat> and so I clicked wait. And so it goes back to doing it, and uh, I was looking down through the list to see what's going on. You know, these are all these MPEG files. And so ne next thing, I, you know, I'd wait a little bit, see it's 350 now. 
Yeah, see, so it's a little bit of time's gone by. Now I've got 19 videos uploaded. And I'm like, hey, it's working, you know. <clears throat> and that kept happening. That that message kept coming up. I didn't do a screenshot of it every time it came up. I, it came up five to ten times. I don't remember how many times. Uh, and finally, and it's 21, 34. Okay, that was the highest it ever got. 21, 351. Okay, and then I went to bed. I quit at four. I remember that. 351. I quit at about four or right after this and just went, got, went, and, you know, got ready for bed. <clears throat> and I went, so, uh, but I, uh, this computer is in my bedroom. So when I wake up and something like, and I've got it running, I left it going. So I woke up at, <laughs> oh crap, not again. What is wrong with you, program? Okay. So at, uh, 9.37 a.m., I woke up and had, you know, woke up, had to go to the bathroom, all that sort of thing, and it had got to 34, and I took a screenshot. <clears throat> and so, uh, 9.39, I, I, I did it. Uh, boy, did I stay up that long? Why did I say 9.34? 9.37, and at 9.39, I don't know, maybe I checked it and went in the other room and came back. Let's see why I'm. 37, 30, oh, that's only two minutes. I was probably sitting here that long. just didn't realize it because I was so half asleep. So I looked over here, <clears throat> and uh, this is the first time I really saw it like this. You know, some finished, some, uh, see, that's an hour-long video, and it was already uploaded. But that's one of those newer vids, an MP4, and that's a move, and it's not working either, and they show to be working in the list of supported file types. <clears throat> shows to be working, uh, that it should work. But I keep thinking this is a regular page and I can do the normal thing to keep rolling my mouse wheel. 3.32, 23 p.m., <clears throat> that's the next time I checked it. Still at 34 of 135. And I couldn't even remember. I didn't go look at the screenshots. First time I really looked at them all since all this. So that's where it got. That's as far as it got. It never made any more progress. Um. 5.59 p.m., still at the same spot. 11 p.m., still at the same spot. That one is a... Oh, I was trying to get a screenshot of the whole page with that. That's those shutter screenshots, that shutter program. <clears throat> it didn't work. It used to, you could do a whole page. And to do pick the right thing, and you could get a whole page. But no matter what I picked, I just got... Same, you know, just that window is what I was getting. I like to get the whole page, so then I can see things like the time and all that sort of stuff. Okay, now this is um, uh, back before I did that. This is when I was deleting. It's kind of hard to figure it all out. I was deleting the old videos. Now, I decided to leave. This is what I was talking about, those move files. I decided to leave them. I didn't delete them. <clears throat> so what I would expect should have happened is that all those... Uh, <clears throat> those should come up with a, those files already exist. You know, you can't upload it again, but it never said that. So, uh, that one of the reasons that's why I'm making this video, because this could have, uh, I don't know. I, I keep thinking it may have a lot to do with this new interface, you know, because there are some things I've seen not work and now I can't remember what they were, but and of course, like I said that, uh, okay, this, the, you have to be, this is the old interface, though. You have to be in this to uh, select multiple files and delete them, and we should be getting to that in a minute. Here we go. There it is right there. So I didn't screenshot every little thing I did, but what I ended up doing is selecting multiple files and deleting them. I tried to delete them all at once, but it wasn't going to work. I kept having trouble. That right there, sorry, an error occurred, and I do it again, delete. I think I started with one file. Well, see. I deleted 13 videos. Delete. Please wait. Deleting videos. Videos deleted. Finally worked. And I didn't start taking screenshots till I realized, oh, maybe I, I want to have a record of this, you know, for myself. I wasn't planning on making a video at the time. <clears throat> and uh, the reason you see these files unselected is because, um, and I can't page down to show you what was, you know, below that, because I wasn't deleting those, but I, but I had to get back up here to get to the Actions tab. Here's some that are selected that I was going to delete. Uh, see, that's what every single video was named. Balance 1976, blah, 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 blah. See, one zero views, one view. And this is 
Okay, there's the date. November 22, 15. That's when I uploaded them. <coughs> See, I didn't upload them for years. <coughs> did, I did those videos in 08, 2008. And I kept hanging on to them. They were all raw, long videos. Long before you, well, you couldn't put more than a 10-minute video. When I first made these videos, YouTube didn't allow more than a 10-minute video. So I couldn't upload them. And I was going to, and it wasn't, I don't remember when they started to lay on longer videos, but <clears throat> I was going to edit them. I really didn't want to edit them into 10-minute videos, but I had planned to do that in a multiple 10-minute videos. <clears throat> and uh, never did, never did. You know, it was just a mammoth task that I just couldn't, couldn't uh, do. When you run your, your computers are in your bedroom and you got to have them heating up your room and making noise and keeping you away. See, when you know something's going on, you always have to check on it. I do, you know. <clears throat> I wake up, and instead of just going to the bathroom, going right back to bed, I'll be getting on the computer checking things, you know, and so it'll wear you out quick. So I, uh, so I, anyway, I never did the editing, <clears throat> and it turns out I don't. I used to think I wanted to edit for a living. I actually had a job in a video place where people could come in and edit their own videos on VCR tapes for a little while, and, uh, and I worked in a TV station as a master control operator, playing the switching the programs that you see on air. For I liked that. I didn't end up liking. I, well, I wanted to, at the time when I was running working at a video editing place, I liked it at that time. But the people, you know, the place wasn't a good place. And, uh, <clears throat> it was also about. It's on the tail end of that. I mean, it was just fixing it, everything was going digital, so it wasn't going to last either. So, so anyway. Um, so I deleted. So I'm deleting some more videos. You see, you can see, you cannot you cannot do this if unless I'm just blind and can't see. You can't do it in the new interface. That'll be terrible. There are plenty of times when you want to do that. Thirteen videos. Sorry, error occurred. Delete. <laughs> Delete. Deleted. Thank you. So uh, so I just go through this over and over, and. Uh, now I'm uh, going to do 25 of them. I um, tried doing all of them at once, and I don't remember. I guess it wouldn't let you do that many or something, so I decided to do a page. I think at the beginning I was scared to try and do them all. And then, anyway, I was just taking what would show up on the page at a time, except for those first few. That yeah, you want to delete all videos on this page? Yes. Oh, error occurred. So I was trying to figure out what do I need to do to get it to work. You know, so a lot of times there's errors and they don't tell you what's wrong and what, what you can and can't do. So I was trying different things. So uh, <clears throat> error occurred again. All uh, videos on this page. You can select all videos matching this query. Only thing is I would have got some I didn't want. I think I finally realized that. Um, like, uh, well, some, I don't remember which ones it would be, but. Anyway, keep on trying to delete. Now this time I'm doing 12. Another error. And uh, some of the, you know, I'm only kind of taking screenshots of the errors too. So you're not seeing the ones where it, all of them where it worked. But anyway, the, I got some to work again. And, um, but just by keeping on trying and trying. Not really doing anything any different. Just keeping on trying. And, uh. You know, I mean, I'm trying to delete about 100 videos. I, I don't really remember exactly. I guess it might have said at the beginning, and I forgot already. But no, I guess it didn't. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure how many. I always thought it was 100, 105 videos, but those ones that were in previous, the beginning of all this, there, 105, the, that included at least 20 or 30, uh, maybe only 10. I don't know. Included at, included at least 10 that were newer videos that I had actually never uploaded the same kind of thing. I was <clears throat> I was hanging on to them for whatever reason. I don't even remember now. And it just time just kept going by. Uh, and there's several, no, not as old as these, but they're like three years old or something now. So uh, what do we got going? I'm talking. Videos deleted. What's this? Working. Yeah. Delete. Do you want to delete? Okay. And then we're back to 2 of 12. That's uploading. What 12 videos was I trying to upload? 
Oh, <clears throat> I tried to upload. I, I was talking earlier how I, um, okay, so I, I deleted everything I wanted to delete. Okay, I got the deleting done. You have to delete them before you can upload the same video again. <clears throat> so that's what got me in the precarious position of all 100 and something videos missing that used to be on my channel. And, you know, I didn't really want to delete them, but uh, I knew I was never going to manually rename every one of those and everything. So I thought it would be easier to... Uh, <clears throat> I kept thinking I would, and I never have. So I thought, okay, it'd be easier to delete them and re-upload so, you know, I renamed them all the way out, exactly the way I wanted them. Um, yeah, this is the way I wanted them. Uh, 01, maybe 01, 02, you know, 76 blazer wheel bearings and the, uh, replace. And then there's another set of fixing the tailgate uh, crank neck mechanism. <clears throat> this is like 12 videos. And then there's another set of 30, I think 30 videos on the tailgate. <coughs> <coughs> So, <clears throat> really, I guess that adds up to 30, 42, plus those DC and move videos. That's another 10 or so. So, that's like 50-something. So, I guess there never was really, that wasn't, I guess I was really dealing with about <clears throat> 50 videos uh, from the old, really old ones. So, um, it starts acting like it's going to upload. It says it uploaded two, <clears throat> and I got to looking and looking. I was like, well, this is taking a long time. Well, these are not big videos, you know. Oh, first one I saw, this video has failed, and it has that little message about supported file time. I'm like, uh-oh. <clears throat> and so I'm still kind of watching it. <coughs> 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 You know, once you get it going, you need you, you really ought to. I always want to wait till it it finishes. It says it's done before I get off the page, and you know, and lose the work, anything that's going to work. Like, what if it's only one or two that don't work, and the rest worked? You know, <clears throat> so uh, uh, <clears throat> when I notice these are upload pending, and then I go back to my uploads page, and then I see more about it's kind of this is kind of better about showing you what's going on it's easier to see because it's highlighted in red and all that so video two and three didn't work four five six seven are still trying oops not again okay <clears throat> rolling that mouse wheel i tried to roll the mouse wheel that's how i go page up and down and it ain't gonna page it's not a it looks like a regular computer screen so anyway yeah number one worked and then that's previous videos, you know, that are public. So, uh, at that point, I only had those two. So, I'm still going back and forth trying to figure out what's going on. <clears throat> there's another one added to the list of not working. Now, there's three. I think there was two up higher and three down lower, you know, in the in the list. See, we're in the middle of the page here. Uh, so, I'm beginning to figure out that I'm going to have, a, it, it gets confusing when some work and some don't to try to figure out what's what, you know. And so uh, this, did, uh, I, I just really going on now, now what do I do, you know. So uh, uh, I just left it until, let it keep working. <clears throat> and uh, now one, two, three, four on down here at the bottom of the list, it didn't work. And, oh, it finally said upload complete. Oh, that's just, wait. Yeah, the whole process is finished. Processing done on that one, but then all those others didn't, you know, they didn't work. And so here, you see, there's all those. <sighs> it didn't work. So let's see. Yeah, see, so we've got 6, 7, 10 through 13. And then two, three, four that didn't work and out of, what was it, 12 videos. So then I clicked on one of them. This is in the beta thing, and it has a pop-up window. I absolutely hate pop-up windows. I'm going to stay with that classic thing as long as I possibly can. <clears throat> um, and so uh, what did I do? Just look at it? Oh, I... Yeah, I think I just looked at it. I might have changed the <laughs> thumbnail or something. 
Oh, and instead of just saying okay, you got to click next. <clears throat> and then it see, I went back to the classic. Uh, I didn't show all my frustration and going back and forth. And I think what I did was no, there's not an exit button left there. Close. I, it's in. It's hiding. They don't want you to use it. Bottom left. <clears throat> um, so. Uh, Oh, and you can set upload with Classic Studio. I think that's what I did. I clicked on something to get there. So then now everything's in the Classic view. And like, there's some things I like about that. That view there, there's, I like that. I kind of actually like that better because it's big enough to read, but you can see more more in the list. You can make that smaller, though. I have probably have this zoomed in to... I got my thing messed up again. I probably have it zoomed in to 150% or something. I don't see. Yeah, 140%. But you can just hit Control Plus or Control Minus to zoom in or zoom out on your in web. Most any application, really, but especially in web browsers. And I have to do that just so I can read stuff, you know. But then when you change to one page, it the text is bigger, and you go to another page, and it's smaller, you know, depending on how they were, how they were, uh, what font they used, so uh, and the size of it. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, yeah, it says upload failed, can't process. So. Uh, it doesn't tell you it's not an acceptable file type. I had to figure that out from that little hint, you know, in the previous page. <clears throat> and there is a difference. That says upload failed can't process file. That says processing abandoned the video could not be processed. Just the same thing in different words. So, see, that's uh, 10, 10, 11, 12, 13. 10, 11, 12, 13. Just see, different messages. Uh, and I, it's really weird when they change this stuff up. Like, I actually kind of like this part right here. I just don't want them separated. It is sometimes when it's helpful to have your uploads and your live videos separated, but most of the time, uh, it's, it's best for me to have them all together in one list. I don't, di once the live stream is over, I don't differentiate in my mind what, you know, which one's an upload and which one was was live at one, you know, one time. It's just a video. <clears throat> and most of my videos uh, are live streams. So, or they are now. They didn't used to be, obviously. <clears throat> but um, anyway, not telling you that it's not an acceptable file type. So, uh, what did I do? I guess I was deleting. I think I went ahead and delete. Yeah, I, I deleted. All, I know I had to delete all these because I couldn't re-upload a. As long as that's there, you can't. You can't. Even though they're not didn't work, you you still can't upload that video again until you delete it. Uh, that's just the way it always has been. You know, they haven't ever. To me, that's a a, pro, a bug. <laughs> but they haven't ever fixed that bug. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway. You have to go back and delete these failed. It says it's a failed upload, but there's really a file there that they just don't like, you know, that their system don't like. I mean, okay, so then I finally remembered uh, my laptop that I'm using to preview. Let's check my sound while I'm thinking about it. Finally, I remembered, well, I didn't remember the name. It's called Handbrake. I didn't remember its name, but I just went over there on the la that my laptop that I preview my stream with, and I... Uh, search you know around in the application search and found handbrake because i knew it was a real good fast <coughs> <coughs> video audio video conversion tool transcoder <coughs> and uh <coughs> waiting i'm reaching over here <coughs> i think i better get another cough drop feels like maybe i'm gonna get to where i can't talk again um, Far enough along in this video, I don't want to have to quit right in the middle of it. <clears throat> Darn it! I just opened a brand new bag of cough drops, and I guess I didn't. I didn't really get the opening. I don't want it too big because I don't want them just falling out. But <clears throat> I do want to be able to get them out. Okay, let me get this thing. <clears throat> My throat is itching like I got <clears throat> something in it. So this is me installing Handbrake uh, with DNF in uh, Fedora 20, 
used to I didn't used to think it was available, but it could have been. I was I, I always spell things in probably some of the oddest ways, but hand b r a k e. If you know how to spell well, you probably. I helped spelled it. First search I did a ham b r e a k. I think is how I spelled it, uh, or something like that. Anyway, you spell it right, came right up, and it's available. I really don't think it used to be available in Fedora, but it is now. So that's good because I've I've known about it and not ever used it much because how I like to run Fedora. And I usually have Debane on some other system, but it's usually an old system. <coughs> it's not powerful enough to run Fedora. Uh, Debane's really lightweight. <coughs> but I happen to like Fedora better, just like just <coughs> the way it works and stuff. So... Uh, and I chose the handbrake GUI, and that's all. It didn't add anything else in there. I thought it might add that handbrake, you know, the the uh, van line version along with it or something, but it didn't. A lot of times apps do that, but it didn't. And so <clears throat> went through and installed it. I'm back in... Um, that is the publish page. Assume. Okay, that's number two was one that didn't work. Okay, I I transcoded one video number two with handbrake. I guess I thought I did screenshots of that, but I guess I didn't. Maybe they're after this or something. <clears throat> but evidently, that's me uploading that video. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know why I, that must have been a mistaken screenshot. I don't know why that's even there. Or maybe I just wanted that whole page. I guess that's what it was. Video failed. <sighs> um, I think the screenshots are kind of mixed is what's going on there <clears throat> in the order. Not in the right order. Anyway, so, you know, that's where I got the clue about the supported file type. Man, here, and I went, this is earlier before I installed Handbrake. I know that. So they're not in the right order. <clears throat> they're close, but not exactly in the right order. So uh, MPEG... MPG is MPEG, the original before MPEG 1, MPEG 2, MPEG 3, MPEG 4. So that's what's going now. You know, that's the version they're at now is MPEG 4. And you can, it's the same file, MPEG 4 or MP4 is the same file. <coughs> <coughs> same file type, just a different way you can write it out. And you see, MOV, that's still supported. That's why I was surprised it didn't upload. Uh, <clears throat> these are the ones that are supported. I'm, I, OBS Studio default is FLV. That's flash, flash video, but never used it before until I started using because I didn't like flash. <clears throat> and used to, it really thought it made the system work too hard. <clears throat> I always used MP, MP, MPEGs. They seem to be the best quality uh, for not work. They used to be the best quality you could get and not work your system too hard, like when I originally made those old videos. I made them on Pentium 2s and 3s, I think. Or, wait a minute. Well, those were Pentium 1s <clears throat> with VLC. I made VLC streams and saved them as a MPEG off of webcams. That's how I made those videos I'm talking about, those old, old ones. <clears throat> and... Uh, I didn't have any other kind of video camera back then, back in those days, in 08. I got one of those. I had two cameras by that time, and one of them I got, it was such a cheap camera, I got it for free just by doing a rebate. It's a D-Link. Uh, evidently, it wasn't a popular camera. <clears throat> and then the other one, I can't remember the name, but I'm looking at them both right now. I got a few years later, and it's, it'll do like 640 by 480 or something like that. And the D-Link will do 320 by something. <laughs> <coughs> they still work. I still turn them on once in a while. Hang on.
Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Nose went to running like crazy on top of my coffin. <clears throat> okay, so uh, this is what they're taking right now. <clears throat> Some things they've added. Well, I don't know. <clears throat> well, they've added those. I don't remember. ProRes. I don't even know what DNXHR is. Cine form. I've seen that before. And I don't know what HEVC, I know what H265 is. That's the newest one be, uh, after H264, but uh, <clears throat> it's kind of hard for me to remember how to explain all this stuff, but I learned about it ever since they invented this stuff. I put uh, MP3s and uh, <clears throat> well, I started with WAV files before MP3s. I put them on website, my music. Uh, I could only do like... 30 seconds worth because it was too big of a file to download on dial up. And when they came out with MP3s, I could, at first I still only did 30 seconds, but then I got to where I could put my whole songs on there. Cause well, at least by the time we got on cable internet, you know, it became, became a thing. And, uh, real audio. That's what I was trying to remember. I, I like actually originally liked real audio. It was actually open source at the beginning and everything was free with players and the encoders. And then I guess somebody bought them. <laughs> Actually, there was a free encoder, but it wasn't, you know, like the full version. It was like shareware, you know, or trialware or whatever. <clears throat> but uh, it made a better quality for a smaller file size than MP3. <clears throat> Or the same file size, but a better sounding quality. You could really hear the difference. But then um, everything went to where you had to buy it. And so I started just using MP3. And I didn't even know back in the day. I remember lame MP3 encoder. Always used that. I think you still, it's still what you use today. If you, I haven't made any in years. But not for to put on. I mean, they've been on my website since about 02. And I haven't made any more. But... Uh, <clears throat> Well, I did in 05 when I did a new album, but um, anyway, I it was several years of me using it before I discovered that, you know, Microsoft owned it. Actually, maybe they bought that later on, too. I don't know. But, <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> everybody seems to know now that uh, MPEG and MP3 is owned by Microsoft, <clears throat> but... Uh, my f my stream um, is being uploaded right now as I speak as a, you know as FLV and then but if you go to download it later that'll let you save it as an MP4 though YouTube uh, <clears throat> but oddly enough the older version of M you know MPEG they're not taking it now I don't know why they see why it would be hard for them to have it backwards compatible and have their servers just have, you know keep whatever software on their server that it needs to to they want to encode it to MP4. Go ahead. <clears throat> they got the horsepower to do it. <coughs> that they're not doing it. So that leads to handbrake. <clears throat> you have to do it yourself. And it looks like I'm going to end up having to do all of my files. Uh, <clears throat> when I did that one, it used. Uh, this is a quad core. It used. 90 to 100 percent of every core for about 10 five to, about 10 minutes probably until it did that file and that was using the fastest setting let's see if i can get a handbrake at some point we should get a handbrake screen now that's just another shot of that here's some more of that page explaining stuff <clears throat> giving you some tips on where you might how you might convert stuff go <clears throat> just really it didn't I'm, I can get to where I can only talk, so I'm not going to try to read off any of that. <clears throat> so, what do we got here? Number two. Okay, that's the original, you know, it can't be processed thing. <clears throat> so, I had to delete it. And it's jumping all over the place. This is not the order it should be in. Back to installing Handbrake again. This is back to where I, after I installed it, Opening it up. Okay, now here's Handbrake. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> what I was talking about is what I could be talking about now a while ago. Oh, and here's something to note. I kept trying to change that from M4V to MP4 because I was afraid that 
YouTube wouldn't like it. It's still an MP4. Uh, does it say it in here? <clears throat> Every section will show you what you're getting. And uh, I ended up using, there's the file name. <clears throat> Let's see. And that was the file size of the video, 800 by 600, and it's 4 by 4.3 aspect ratio. It didn't try to change it or anything. It turned it into a 1080p, even though it doesn't show it there, but uh, that was the default. It, and I happened to notice, <clears throat> we'll go to the next one, and I'll, I'll explain should have another screenshot where to see it. And it was 25 frames per second, <clears throat> which uh, I thought it would might have been, I might have recorded in 30, but I probably tried for 30 and only got 25. <laughs> <coughs> but that was fine. <clears throat> the only thing I changed was, this is basically the default settings right here. And that worked just fine. I changed a couple of things, and I'll see if I can. If it's in my screenshots or not. But what it was running, okay, I guess I didn't get a screenshot. <clears throat> um, I thing I did was, um, there's a box where you can check. You have to go through these tabs. I turned on, I set it to web compatible. <clears throat> so that it's, it's, it'll make it where it streams. You don't have to download the whole file. You can stream it, you know. before to watch. You don't have to download the whole file before you can watch it. You can stream it. Do you want that on, the, you know? On anything on the internet, <clears throat> uh, that's what you're always doing. When you watch a video on the internet; it's streaming. Okay, so that auto crop was defaulted. And I went. In, I was like, "Oh wait a minute, is I going to mess up my video?" But it didn't. I, I kept, there's a preview up here. You click preview, top right. There's different things you can do, and it was fine. <clears throat> so I I turned on a filter, uh, and I can't remember it. So unless I have a screenshot of it, I can't explain it. But there's one filter that helped uh, get rid of. The pixeling, you know, because it's old video and, and low resolution. It did help it a little, just a little. <clears throat> and the rest of them I didn't change. But it started immediately using 92% of CPU as soon as I started running it. That's the pro process of the program. And I went over here to this other view. And uh, I always leave this open, you know, the system monitor. Oh, I can't click on it. <clears throat> I always leave system monitor open you know, so I can look at it quickly. But you see, it was really working this machine it was just almost complete you couldn't do anything else it could barely it's just like it could barely even do this at all that was on the fastest setting i guess it didn't show it but there's different presets you can pick and it was there's fastest and really fast or something and fast <clears throat> and then there's a, there's a menagerie of other types and sizes of videos but you do have to well there are what even if you don't know anything about video you can uh, still kind of figure it out, I think, with a little common sense. Uh, actually, you'd probably the default would probably work for, <clears throat> you know, like YouTube and stuff like that, up to 1080p <clears throat> video. That was the point I was going to say. It, it is. This is not 1080p. This is somewhere in the middle. It's not 720. It's bigger than 720. It's smaller than 1080. <clears throat> 720 would be 720 by. Uh, but it actually is kind of flexible, this default setting. And it said in there, when you hover over it, it says up to, it will accept up to 1080p. And I was like, oh, okay. Otherwise, I would have went around and around trying to figure out what to set this thing on. Because <clears throat> I've used it before, but not all the time. Like I said, uh, I've used it a lot a few years ago. <clears throat> but the laptop's on 1.6 gigahertz single core. There's no way. I started, thought about just running it on there, and I thought, no, it can't do that. I thought, well, it's the server, and I can let it run all the time, you know, but. It would probably lock up, very likely lock up. And if nothing else, it'd make a lot of noise working it solid. <laughs> Trying to do 12 or 30 files or something. <clears throat> so uh, I decided to do one. I decided I, f I wanted to see if I could install it on here, and I did, and then I did one to see what would happen. It's a good thing because I found out that I can't uh, do it. If I'm going to do this, I better set it and go to bed because I certainly can't. <clears throat> and then it's going to make heat and uh, probably wake me up with noise because that thing doesn't make noise, but if it's running that hard, I think I would hear it. It's right over by my bed. But it only took about 10 minutes. I went off in the other room for a minute, came back. <clears throat> Not bad on the memory. That's everything on the machine running, you know. And uh, there's a preview shot. Uh, that's a thumbnail, not a 
not the preview of the video. <clears throat> oh, here's some web optimize. That's what I selected. That was a, one of the defaults. I've learned this is a good program. With a good program, don't change the defaults unless you know what you're doing. You're getting an H264, 30 frames per second. Uh, oh, that's the audio. <clears throat> Wait. Is that what I put in, or is that what it's doing? It says it says unknown AAC. So that's talking about, I can't believe H264 wasn't out back when I made that, those files. Wasn't even out yet. That's what it sees it as, though. <clears throat> and uh, so, uh, yeah, so that's the only screenshot I did was of, of any other tabs. It's actually just a summary after I, oh, that's after I gave it a video, I guess. I don't know. The other one had a video in there, too. But for some, oh, I'm on the dimensions. That's why. Okay. So that's the summary. But the other thing about the filters, I don't guess, I don't know if I have a screenshot of that. So here's the uh, processing done. The upload succeeded of that file <clears throat> after I uh, transcoded it to MP4 from MPEG. Basically, I guess you'd call it MPEG-1. <clears throat> then MPEG-2 would be, you know, after MPEG, it would be MPEG-2, I think is how it went. Oh, and then this is back to where I started on my screenshots, you know, uploading. Uh, trying to upload all those, transfer all those videos. It says upload, but it's transferring all those videos from Google Photos to YouTube. <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> kind of painstaking going through all this, but it's... You know, I couldn't remember all this to try to tell the story without something to help me remember. But uh, <clears throat> it's making noise. Something's making noise. <clears throat> I'm just checking my sound while. <clears throat> <laughs> I keep forgetting to move away from the mic when I cough. I'm afraid that the fan in that laptop up there is making that noise. <clears throat> I guess I better check on it. Oh, I tried to close that and it didn't work. Here we go. So I'm going to close that. And... <clears throat> I'm going to switch over to my <coughs> lapel mic, <coughs> lapel mic, switch over to the lapels and get my, get up there and look at that. I may grab the camera and show it. Let's see. Well, let's go ahead. I have it in this one with the stick on it. Now I've got camera one <coughs> and where camera two used to. Yep. Okay, it's just it's working hard. That's what it is. I can't remember which side the camera's on. There it is. <clears throat> Down here is the uh, <clears throat> fans right there, fan outlet. It's just working real hard because, oops. This thing is sitting. This is where I put it on the Acer laptop. Battery basically just about, you know, it's basically almost dead. I set <clears throat> these extra two boxes here where I could, there's another box that's been there forever, but I set those two boxes there. I got it up high enough that I could <clears throat> see it when I'm sitting in my chair. And I, it used to be over here. I stuck the Acer over here. <clears throat> I got that little thing in front of it because those blinking yellow lights drive me nuts. Anytime it's plugged in, it blinks. <clears throat> but, uh, and they're showing, you know, errors of what they're doing. But anyway, that's where I keep normally keep that other laptop. And this one, it, the screen's broken and everything, so it's really no use for it to be there. It was just a place to set it. <clears throat> but uh, I really want that. I like it better where I used to keep it, but I can't, I did, you know, I have to 
that's a slide out tray. I shove that in when I go to bed. And you know, I can't even get in and out of bed with it out hardly. So <clears throat> I actually hurt myself trying to get it in and out of there. <clears throat> so anyway, then the lid would have to be shut. And although I think I can, I think I do have it set up to where it would still keep running with the lid shut. This one, <clears throat> uh, it would overheat. <clears throat> it would do what it's doing right now. It would work real hard. The fan would work real hard. But I shut it for a little while. See, it's nice. It's just warm, just barely warm. <clears throat> but it, uh, it would get, it, w it, it will overheat in about 10 minutes. Get pretty darn warm. I mean, <clears throat> it wasn't acting up or anything, but you don't want to run a laptop in that kind of conditions. <clears throat> Bad idea. So, uh, <clears throat> one thing that, <clears throat> let me put this back up in here. People don't, uh, well, especially people that, uh, I don't know if it's because they, you know, desktops are pretty tough. They can kind of handle a lot of heat and all that stuff. They make a lot of heat. Um, and you can run for years and years and not have to, you know, most people don't even, I didn't know for years that <clears throat> uh, at some point, you know, after so many years, you better check that CPU paste because it's going to be dry out and then <clears throat> they'll overheat and shut down. Usually that's when you check them. Yeah, they overheat and shut down. Well, laptops <clears throat> do it way sooner. They can be a year old, two years old. It depends on how you use them. You know, like if you like people love to set them on their bed and their couch and everything, and it's blocking the fan. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> by the way, if I close the web browser that I'm using to uh, see my preview, it'll probably stop working so hard and cool off. So I'll close that. Uh, that's working it really just running the web browser with that video playing. <clears throat> after a while, it works it. Uh, of course, I ran it for two and a half hours earlier. And then I, I didn't reboot it. I started to, and then I decided not to. And uh, well, now I've ran it another, how long have I been going? Oh, an hour and a half, hour and 17 minutes. <clears throat> so uh, anyway, it decided it's it's been working long. It, it's getting hot. It's been, it's getting hot now, warming up. <clears throat> so uh, usually I can just close the web browser and it'll cool down and get all right. And then I can open it back up, but I'm about ready to quit anyway. So, but it might not. It might uh, <clears throat> might have to be shut down for a while, or re at least rebooted. Rebooting helps because it clears all the cache memory and the the memory, the RAM memory. It clears out the RAM memory and stuff. That was always a debate about computers. Uh, I learned many years ago to. If you you know if you're gonna run a com like I run a computer all day I shut it down at night I don't leave it running at night I don't let it go to sleep or anything. People I've known so many people that especially with Windows it didn't really manage the RAM RAM very well Linux manages the RAM a lot better but the video is really kind of the same either way. Uh, the video is what runs out. The video cache gets full. The video well. You know, I'm trying to think. <clears throat> I'm probably using the wrong word, cache. Uh, I'm trying to remember, is there RAM on a video card? Anyway, the video memory gets full, I'll just say that. And, uh, and then it gets, if you just let it keep on running it, after a few days to a month, however long it takes, <clears throat> or a whole day, sometimes it's just a day, all you can get out of on the card, depending on what operating system you're running. <clears throat> or the machine will halt crawls to a halt, you know. And uh, you just figure out how long you can go and then reboot it <clears throat> uh, ever so often. This machine I'm streaming from, it's a quad core with four gig of RAM. That's no hotshot machine, but it was it's no complete slouch, but it only has, this is an enterprise machine. It was not meant for what I'm doing with it, you know. Uh, it's 256 megabyte of onboard memory. This Lenovo i5 is really just, I call it Lenovo i5 because it's, I can't remember its model number, but it has an i5 processor. Uh, but it's only, it, it's only 256 megabyte of onboard video memory. It's a laptop in a box is what I call it. That's what it is. It's built exactly like a laptop. The only difference is the motherboard is not shaped, you know, funky like a laptop motherboard. 
going this way and that. It's just kind of a rectangle. Doesn't have a fan. <clears throat> See, it has one fan in it, yeah. No heat sink fan. It just has, has a, uh, for the, no GPU heat fan. It just has a huge, or CPU fan. It has just huge heat sink on it. So it's really quiet, but it has one fan in it. It does have a fan. Uh, and, uh, but it, it's actually, I've been using it four or five years now. It's really, other than that, it's a good machine. But when that thing begins to show the slightest hint of uh, slowing down and not playing videos well, because mostly that's what I do that a lot, watch videos or make videos, uh, reboot it and you'll be fine. <clears throat> and you know what you're doing. Some days you can go 8, 12 hours. Some days you can't go four, four hours before you got to reboot it. Depends on what you're doing. And I mean, I went backwards with video memory because I had a 512 megabyte GPU video, video card in my old machine. <clears throat> and, uh, but it was only 1.8 dual core Intel with three gig of RAM, I think, or two and a half or three gig of RAM. I used it for years and years, and it was getting to where, well, it, it's got Fedora 14 on it. I didn't bother. I'd already tried, uh, you know, those, any, like all the way up to Fedora 20 on different other machines, and, you know, Fedora 1920 would not run all that well on a dual-core machine. Um, it's just a little too much for them. <clears throat> Maybe if you had lots of, you know, like four gig of memory or something, but you can only put, let's see, what can you put in there? Actually, it may be four gigas of what I could put in that, but I haven't, I don't remember. I don't think I, well, once I got this machine, I didn't bother trying to put more memory in. Oddly enough, I put more memory in everything else, but I, I never did add more memory to that one. Uh, I think four gig would be the max it would take. I don't remember now. Anyway, that was a, that, that machine <coughs> was a, the one point eight gigahertz was a, the motherboard was, it was a gateway machine, but it got hit by lightning and the motherboard was okay, Mother, memory was okay, processor was okay, <coughs> but the, uh, it must have hit the modem, come through the modem line or something, <coughs> modem was bad, anyway, um, I forget the exact, anyway, I kept, I, I took it as half trade on the labor for fixing, uh, Oh, I, I look, that's right. Uh, I diagnosed the machine, well, and the lady had insurance on her comp house or whatever, and uh, she decided to just get a new machine instead of fixing that one, which I, I think I told her. I don't remember what, I, now, but I, uh, that was, that was good for her, you know. If she didn't have the money to buy a whole new full machine, then I could have, uh, I don't remember all the things, what I would have had to do to make it back good again, good enough for her. But anyway, I charged her like 30, 35 bucks, which, you know, any uh, staples at the time charged 100 for any kind of virus scan or diagnosis or anything. I think maybe they charged 60 for a diagnosis at the time, but anyway, this years ago. But, uh, um, my neighbor who give, gave me this Lenovo i5, uh, he he would bring me. He would he would a lot of he would do software setup and email setup and fixing troubleshooting for people. And then when he got to something that was hardware or really hard problem, <clears throat> he'd bring it to me. <clears throat> and uh, not real often here and there, but. Uh, anyway, it ended up being my. I went from a Pentium 4, I, I still love that machine, I still have it in here. But a Pentium 4, when it got to where it, you know, it couldn't run Fedora 14. A Pentium 4 with 2 gig of RAM. <clears throat> and on a lot of things, like say running, let's see, what was I? I've got something, for, I think I have Fedora 20 on or something and it runs really slow, but it'll run it. But uh, <clears throat> when I was running, I know it ran Fedora 5 through 9, uh, well actually 5 through 8 really well. Nine uh, actually had, well, I was actually running Blag Linux, uh, remix of Fedora, and Blag 9 was screwed up and it wouldn't run. <clears throat> That's when I went to Debane. 
Devane 5. I put Devane 5 on it and ran that for a couple of years and ran great. And then I just used it to play with since then, but uh, put different things on it and see what it would do. <clears throat> but uh, that old machine, uh, 2.4 gigahertz, was noticeably faster at anything a single core processor could do well over that 1.8 gigahertz dual core. Dual core. But it was louder and made more noise. <coughs> I mean. <coughs> It was louder and made more heat. I was trying to say. <clears throat> okay, let's get off of this mic. Go back on the SM58. And I think I'm done. I'm rambling like crazy. There is a... <clears throat> if I tried to summarize what I've been talking about, I, uh, conclusion. I like to draw a conclusion, but <clears throat> I'm all out of sorts with the coughing and my nose running. I'm tired, too. After this, you know, now it's really my time to get ready for bed. <clears throat> and uh, two video, I'm, make, uh, I'm making two videos in one day. It's pretty well wore me out. So, uh, yeah, there you go. That is the state of trying to upload uh, MPEG. Any older, well, it's not just the older videos, so it's uh, one, one more time before I go. Uh, go. I am going to, let's go in here and look at the video. Let me blow my nose while it's... Well, I'm glad I did that. Guess what? Let me make sure I'm on the desktop. I'm on the camera. Okay, so I thought I was showing you the desktop, not me blowing my nose. Sorry. I really did not know that. Okay, I'm going to open up my preview again up there. <clears throat> so I'll know what's going on. Make sure I'm not talking to the talking to the computer screen and, you know, there's no... Uh, but you can see there... All those videos that didn't work are now. They're not saying processing anymore. Get this thing back on my live preview page. <clears throat> That's my laptop up there is what I'm trying to get back to where I want it to be. Yeah, the the uh, laptop did uh, the it did quit making all that noise. It quit. Uh, it, it the longer you run, uh, especially video. The longer you run video, the uh, harder it, you know, it keeps working. So, yeah, you can just, uh, <clears throat> I was talking about having to reboot the machines. Well, you can sometimes just close the browser and let it uh, delete all that video cache and all that stuff and whatever it is that's using up GPU power and everything. Uh, clear the caches and everything, and then it might be all right again for a while, but... You know, if you get it to that point, you you better remember to reboot pretty soon. Especially this one is also my web server now, so that that laptop, so that Dell six thousand. So I definitely need to do that because it's not going to be shut down. It's going to be run until I put get another server up and going. <clears throat> but yeah, here we go. Um, I don't know. It says it couldn't be processed. It doesn't say that it's already there like usual. I don't know why it's a, you know, doing an error. I'm glad I didn't delete those now. I'm gonna have to go and re, retranscode those. Those don't matter. I'm not gonna do it right now. I'm too tired. I'm afraid I'll just mess something up. But now, now that I know for sure that those are not going to work, uh, I'll go into the old classic one and select every one of them and then delete like I showed in those screenshots. Yeah, it, although it acts up a lot, it does work. 
Otherwise, you've got to sit there and one at a time go and delete, delete. And, it, you know, it asks you three times, do you really want to delete it, which is good because you may have – I accidentally click on stuff all the time or I'm not thinking straight, you know, I'm like I'm not – do something fast. <clears throat> but here's the thing. Yeah, I think I need screenshots of all this too. And there's more videos than just this page. And I'll go to the next page too. But uh, – <clears throat> Keep it figuring all this out. Like, what do I got and what do I don't got uploaded? You know, it's going to be such a pain with these videos because that just, I can't, I can't fathom those long numbers, you know. Uh, these ones that are named, you know, tw 12 in the, you know, that's easy, to, uh, 12, 76 Blazer. And I put an L, I put A, B, C, D, F, G's in there too to help further identify those. But, you know, words and sentences, that's what I understand. I don't, numbers don't retain in my memory. I'm, that's why I'm not a programmer. <clears throat> I'm not good at math. And although I was a cabinet maker and I was back in years ago in the 80s, I was actually pretty good and pretty accurate at my work. But I learned workarounds to having to do math in my head too, using the measuring tape and stuff. Actually, my guy, one of the guys I worked for taught me some really cool stuff. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, you don't have time to sit down and get out a piece of paper and figure things out on a piece of paper when you're when you're working in a production shop. <clears throat> you got to learn how to do things and do it fast. And I was able to do it, but I've never been good at math, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> could never understand algebra and trig, you know, and all that. Not for more than five minutes. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, that's what programming is. If you didn't know, it's math. That's what I see when I see programming. When I, I took a Python class and <coughs> online at Google uh, School thing that they have, and uh, <coughs> well, I tried to take three classes at once, and <laughs> I could have. I, I was passing. I was passing the test on the Python class. Yet some of the others, I, you know, I just couldn't. It was. I got in over my head. It was how the classes I took were how to build a self-driving car, and it was serious. You know computer science stuff but uh the python class if i'd only took that class i probably could have finished it but it was going really fast in the very beginning they went really fast and you had to keep up and i couldn't keep up so i dropped out of it it was free <clears throat> but i did learn some things that i still i can copy and paste some code uh, code and build, I, made, I made me a screensaver made me a a screensaver, and right after I took the class, I made a screensaver in Python uh, with an IDE. I don't think I have any IDEs. In there. Well, I might have some. But anyway, I don't remember which one I used. But back to what I'm doing. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, I'm going to have to somehow – we're dealing with 105 videos here. i got to figure out what I got and what I don't got. Mostly what I don't got is these – old impact videos but a lot of these new mp4s i didn't get either those are the ones i got to try to figure out how to track and because <clears throat> you don't want to just see i have um these folders organized in fi uh, these files uh, these videos organized in most of them anyway organized in uh, you know these were on google photos and actually i'll try to go in there and see the file names i cannot you can't hover over the icons and see the file names. It's really dang near impossible to find the file names in there in a way that you can see them well. Uh, you can see them one video at a time if you um, – well, let's just I – go, I won't go through that right now. Let's keep going and see what we got here. Um, anyway, it, was, it was just wasn't an way for, easy way for me. It wasn't laid in a way that I could do any organizing that way. <clears throat> and this is really all, you know, this is all, well, there's so many I don't, it wouldn't matter. If they were on one page, it just wouldn't load well, so you wouldn't really want them all on one page. But got 200, 200 megabit per second download speed, and you just as much trouble. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, when I had... <clears throat> fastest I ever remember my internet being is when I first got cable and it was three megabits. But the web uh, pages weren't so full of crap, you know, like they are now. So many 
web applications trying to run in, you know, download and run in your browser and everything. <clears throat> Java and well, we don't at least Flash was the killer when they when Flash came out. Well, actually, it did come out before I got my high speed internet. You know, at first I thought it was the coolest thing ever because you could uh, you could watch videos with an, a decent resolution over dial up, <clears throat> but before the video was 10 minute video was done playing your computer was suddenly locking up because it was using 100 percent of your cpu and flash always did that from day one well i guess it's i consider it gone because i don't i don't have to install it to watch videos anymore on my computer you know i don't notice it it, if a page has flash i don't notice it because i don't have a flash player on in my web browser anymore uh but so I consider it dead, you know, but it's still there. I do know that. And there are a lot of other things besides videos that use Flash, you know, but I don't notice it. You know, I don't notice whatever I'm not saying. It, it's not bothering me. Any. It's not breaking a page anymore or anything. So <clears throat> that's good. Yeah, okay, here we are. That is my last video I uploaded before I started all this. And uh, so, yeah, all those 105 videos that I tried to transfer, I'm going to have a I got to make sure that I know the vid videos, the, the ones that, those are the ones I'm going to have to, I'll have to go find them and try to, see, I don't want to delete until, well, that's what I'll do. I can do this. I've done this before. Copy and paste the file name. Well, now that didn't used to happen. God, I, I'm getting a serious, now I see why I saw such vicious complaints about this new system, you know. And that, oh yeah, right there, get out of it. Cancel. I want to just, I don't want to do anything but get out of there. Oh, I hate this. Okay, you got it. You have to say save to draft. Otherwise, if you click next, just like two or three or four next. That drives me crazy. So yeah, I, did, I, I agree with all you people that hate this thing. I'm beginning to hate it more and more. I'm trying to be... A little optimistic because you know you're gonna you're gonna get it whether you like it or not anyway. But uh, boy, I will stick with that. This is what I've been doing ever since they've started coming. You know, built working on this. I will use it. Well, they keep stuffing it in your face. I mean, when you go to your videos, see, I okay, I, this link was originally to the old version, but now it goes to the new version. This link that I saved and I tried to resave it again. You, you go to Classic Studio and save a, save it. Uh, doesn't help. It still goes to the new one when you go back to it. So they've got. At first it worked, but uh, only for a while, a month, two weeks to a month. Uh, but you can, and I, I thought it was gone. And you couldn't get there. It was gone altogether. But I didn't realize it was down there at the bottom left. So you can still get to it. So click it on that. Skipping all the crap. And then it takes us time to get there. <clears throat> and so, uh, that says upload failed. That's the difference in how it looks. But uh, are we on the first page again? We're on the first page. And like I said, there's uh, as far as this part of it, there's just pluses and minuses. But there's one thing. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's say I wanted to delete. I think I can show it without doing it. I don't want to do anything right now. Like I said, I'm tired. Uh, I select those two videos. I go to actions on all the different things. And at the right there, you said delete. And uh, do you want to do it? I'm going to say cancel because I don't want to do it right now. But um, <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to have to go through and find the, like here's one right there. So I can find, see, this is what I was trying to do. Why did it pop up a freaking window? Because I right clicked and highlighted and tried to right click and copy. So then I go over into my file manager and search for that video and upload it, you know, and uh, <clears throat> hope it works. And if it doesn't, I don't know. Sometimes here's a, here's a here's a tip: <clears throat> if you have a video plays perfectly fine, say, like I use VLC, and VLC is really good. It'll play darn near anything. It'll play videos that are actually broken to other <clears throat> players. Uh, they don't have a 
the code that says this is the beginning or this is really it's really the end uh i, th I don't think it'll play them if it doesn't have a beginning not a tag but uh, i can't remember the right word to say other than code but uh videos you know they have a they have some code uh, some code at the beginning saying this is the beginning of the video blah 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 and at the end it says this is the end of the video blah 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 and uh <clears throat> If a video gets broken, like especially if you're doing a live stream, it will still play in VLC, but it won't work, it won't play right with other programs. A lot of other programs. This is VLC VLAN, VLC Media Player. <clears throat> this will also stream and make save videos too. But um, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> I think. Okay, click on, you can click on my, there's different ways to get to. You can go up here and uh, navigate your way through your whole computer system, you know, or you can uh, you can open direct, whole directories, you know, you can do disk. You can play just most things that can be played. Uh, there are some file formats that won't play. Here's my, you know, home DOM videos folders, and these are what I have in here. Like sometimes something happens and um, it hasn't happened today, so I can't, you know, do it as an example, but I might have one of these. Okay, here's uh, these were some. Uh, this was actually a script that would make. Uh, I didn't make this with VLC. These were actually made with a script to tell to use the VLC engine, I guess you'd say, to make the videos, and they they actually make a separate uh, video and audio file. See, they're named Temp. They I think they did get broken. They, they don't have an end to them. Let's see. Let's see. You can always tell. Okay, no, it has the time. Uh, it's, so it has an end on it to it. See, and you can also, if you can't fast forward, then uh, that's another clue that it doesn't have an end and that you may have trouble, say, <laughs> let me see. Do I, I can't remember now. What I was going to say is that might be why you have a failed upload uh, on YouTube. More I think about it, uh, I'm not so sure that it, YouTube might fix those. But there are certain things wrong with videos, and you may not know it until you try to upload it somewhere or something like, say, this one. It could just be a glitch in the upload. or This is actually not an upload. It's a transfer. It could be a glitch in the transfer, uh, maybe some lost data packets or something, I'm just for a wild guess, between uh, their photo server and their YouTube server. This does not go through your machine. You're just control, remotely controlling the Google Photo server saying, hey, send these over to YouTube. Or you're going to YouTube and saying, hey, Google Photos, please let me have these files. You know, that's what you're actually doing. <clears throat> and uh, Google Photos says, okay, you can have these, but not these. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, that, I'm just joking. Uh, I don't know about what's the deal with that. Uh, it, but, it, you know, there's several of these that didn't work, and then several, most of them did. But all these others, the MPEGs, I know I figured out what was wrong. That's what this whole video was about. Um, but it does not anywhere tell you that's why it didn't work, except for that one little spot with the little hint. You know, of, it still doesn't ever say, "Hey, we don't accept this file type." Why not? Old old interface or new interface? It does not say. Uh, and, and, you know, this has always gone, in every video, any site that would, that would allow you to upload videos for all these years, it's always gone back and forth. Some sites, it tells you, okay, this file type not accepted. And it'll tell you really quick, too. It doesn't go through the whole process of uploading the whole file. And if it's a big file, you don't know for an hour or two sometimes, you know. <sighs> um, and with YouTube, it does, still doesn't tell you that, oh, we don't accept that file type. You just, you just have to understand YouTube to get, even get a clue, you know. Um, others in the years past, the instant it tried to upload it, it might take a, up to a minute. It would say, oh, you, this file type is not accepted on our server, you know. But, and the message would usually say, but we do accept these file types. Or it would give you a link. Go here to see what file types we accept. So that's what they should do. Um, and I don't really, I don't, 
used to. I didn't have. Uh, they used to accept a lot wider range of file types. I in the last few years is when I started having this kind of trouble, and it's really crazy when you deleted all these videos that were on your channel. Try to re-upload them. The only reason I did all this was just to get the names right. I thought it'd be easier <laughs> than manually renaming each and every one of them. The problem is, is I really couldn't tell. I'd have to sit there and watch ten, at least ten minutes or more of each video, and then go watch it again. I'd have to go over here and watch it on YouTube, then watch it on my computer, and try to figure out. <clears throat> what video name goes with what video on youtube you know so i thought heck i can delete them all in batches which i did and it took you know i didn't take more than 10 minutes i don't think once i figured out where how to get to the old interface and do it, it well it took me 30 45 minutes to figure it all out probably but um anyway i deleted them all i committed to it and then i thought you know and then i, I you know i really didn't expect to not be able to re-upload them they were already on there right and uh, then I come to find out, you know, after hours and hours and I don't know how long, um, that they don't take MPEGs anymore. Nothing older than MPEG, MPEG, MPEG 4, MPEG 4, MP4. So uh, MPEG 4 or MP4 is the file extension. And, well, actually, like I showed, I, I found out by trying it because I had no choice when I converted them with uh, Handbrake. It wouldn't let you give it an MP4. It was going to be M4V or whatever their that file extension is, <clears throat> and uh, that's. Uh, but it, and <clears throat> but it, that worked just fine. No squawks whatsoever. Um, YouTube is looking at the files uh, encoding and everything, not the file extension. I figured that out that way. I thought they did, but I, it did, but I wasn't sure that the software. Most video software nowadays, they used to go by the file extension, and sometimes it would, uh, you could just change the file extension and, and get it to work. Actually, I used to do that on YouTube years ago. As long as the encoding, uh, that was the thing I was kind of trying to show, and there's so much to that. And there are pages on YouTube telling you what encoding they accept and all that too. And what uh, bit rate, you know, resolution, bit rate, uh, like, uh, I, I'm tired now, and I can't even squawk any of that stuff out. But let's see, there's three main things: resolution. Uh, of course, so I'm tired. I'm going to say dot sprints. That's for printing. I was talking about the, uh, in my previous video. I was actually got off sidetrack talking about this, and I was saying all that stuff. And now I can't remember it. But uh, you know, 1080p. That's the resolution. Or 720p. That's the resolution. 4K. Which that's even 4K is like why did they just start calling it 4K? I mean it it it, it takes the logic out of it. You know what 1080p is? It's 1080 by 1080 wide by <clears throat> however tall it is. Um, and I think they actually allow like different heights, uh, a little bit of variation on the at least on the height. I don't know about the width when and still call it 1080p, but. <clears throat> I do know in that encoder, I selected 1080p, and it and actually accepted my 800 by 600. I saw you saw that earlier, <clears throat> videos, uh, without you know screwing things up. <clears throat> and uh, you, before I used to say so like if you're using KDN Live, you got to pick the the resolution that matches your video, or else it's going to re. It'll either it'll either like uh, blow you know stretch your video. Or crop it, or whatever, whatever you tell it to do, <coughs> or it'll put in, it'll just put in black bars on the top, bottom, or left and right, or whatever. And you don't really want to do that on YouTube. It doesn't work well. They don't, you know, the system doesn't like it. So you don't want that. Uh, it doesn't work very well. And YouTube will accept different sizes you know different resolutions okay so there's that and then megabits per second um that's another thing another component to video you know uh how many megabits per second and, and the bigger the, basically the bigger the number the higher quality and then there's megapixels and that's the other one <clears throat> uh you know the bigger the number the higher the quality 
Uh, but then when you're talking about encoding, there are all these hundreds of different encoders. And when I was looking a while ago, YouTube accepts, I can't remember now, but I do remember I saved the link. And I believe it was one of the last links. I, uh, I don't know if that's going to be. Oh, that's a video. Well, of course it's a video. What did you think it was? I might have sorted this or something. <clears throat> oh, that's it. I wasn't reading. I was. I thought that was. I don't know what I thought that was. Okay, supported YouTube file formats. <clears throat> okay, now all I went over earlier was, you know, the different file extensions is what those are. Uh, it doesn't go into the details on this page. Okay, now audio files. Uh, let's see. Oh, you can't you upload just audio files. you got to edit them in a editing software. Okay, so... They're not going into any of the, oh, here we go, encoding settings. Okay, now, that MP4, that's, you know, I had an MPEG, so I, I needed to uh, encode mine, re you know, transcode them to MP4. So that's a note. I don't really know what that note's even about. <clears throat> um, no edit lists. Well, I don't know what that's about either. Uh, it's always new things being added and change, things change, as, as we know, as I discovered. Audio codec, they'll accept AAC, LC. Is that the only one? Channels can be stereo or 5.1, sample rate 96 or 48.0. I thought, you know, that's 96 is not a very good sample rate. I've always used 128 or 164, 68, whatever. They can jump in certain increments. 96 has always been considered good. 48 is okay for just vocal. It's just talking like I'm doing. 96 is uh, acceptable for music, but not good. 128 is pretty much, 128 to 196 is generally used for music. Uh, so yeah, that seems to be something new to me. Actually, I, I don't know. Maybe I just forgot. Video codec H.264. Oh, they're not accepting H.265 yet. I didn't know that. See all this stuff. This is all the things you can get into. And but if you try, <clears throat> some things won't. It won't squawk, and some things that will. Because I've ran into that. But that aren't exactly this. Last time I looked at this, it is not this narrow. It had more options. I'm surprised looking at it. Yeah, progressive scan, no interlacing. Hmm. I, yeah, those are two very common things, and you can select one or the other, you know, when you set up, if you're going to get into the details of setting up a video. Uh, but good news, the uh, handbrake actually is default. Did what YouTube uses. I didn't select there is an handbrake. There are YouTube. Oh, I can go into handbrake. I'll go in there in a minute. I cut coughing so much. I don't know that it's, that's a good thing to just keep on going. But uh, lot. See, there's now you don't have to learn every bit of this. A lot of this, some of this stuff, I don't remember. Uh, I mean, it looks familiar, but I don't know exactly what it. I don't remember exactly what it means anyway. Variable bit rate. Used to variable bitrate was considered low quality. Um, you wanted a set bitrate. I don't know why that's considered good for YouTube. Uh, frame rate, common frame rates, you know, 24, 25, 30. I generally always try to aim for 30 because that's the standard for uh, in uh, American video, for NTF, uh, NTFS, I can't even remember the letters. American television video bit right and <clears throat> let's see should be dinner okay interlaced con content should be de-interlaced before uploading for example 1080 
I-60 content should be deinterlaced to 1080p 30. I always go for 1080p because that's the highest quality before you get to 4K. That's what they say, generally. Uh, I never have had a camera that could do 60 frames per second. So. That's what that is, by the way, 60 frames per second. 30, that's 30 frames per second. 60 is 60 frames per second. They didn't say that. <clears throat> Interlaced fields per second. They're saying fields per second there, which I guess maybe they've decided to change the terminology since uh, frames per second uh, referred to, you know, film, actually. Remember that thing, film? You know, all the big movies were made with film back in the olden days about 20 years ago. It's actually only about 10 years ago. I mean, there's still films being made, movies being made on film. Some people really still like it, you know. Okay, bit rate. Um, okay. Audio playback bit rate is not related to video resolution. Okay, now let's see. Recommended video bit rates for SDR uploads. I don't even know what SDR stands for. Uh, to view new 4K uploads in 4K, use a browser or device that supports VP9. <coughs> oh, now, I used to I used to use VP8. That was actually was started by Google. I don't know if they still own it. Uh, WebM on v, VP8. Now it's VP9. You can upload WebM, so I know that, <coughs> but it doesn't. I don't believe it has in that list VP9. They do have WebM. <coughs> but you had to really get into this. You got to learn. You get. I mean, I know enough to understand most of it, but there's people that know every little detail of this stuff. Anyway, um, generally, you know, and generally, you don't have to know all this. Uh, you're, you're, you know, you have an, an average phone or an average camera. It's going to record it. Well, if you have a pretty high end camera, you're going to have to know this to get the right format for YouTube you know, to get it or to transcode your video from whatever it was originally. When you edit your video, you would transcode it to or render it to format that YouTube can will take. Okay, here's a, here's the numbers they're using for 4K. I've never even seen this. 4K, 2160p. I've seen it probably and forgot. 1440p, that's considered 2K. That's one they basically skipped. <laughs> and... Uh, <coughs> 1080p, now video bit rate, standard frame rate, 24, 25, and 30. Okay, now megabits. That is really weird. Uh, they're saying 1080p, 8 megabits. I've, I don't remember what my, my camera defaults to higher than that, I swear. I've done as much as I've done 100 megabits. I've done, I've done, I don't guess I've done a thousand megabits. Let's see, what's some, I don't remember. I'd have to look in my camera, in my open camera setup when I record straight to the phone. But, uh, you see, a lot of this they say that, but then if you have something a little more, it will just take it anyway. I don't know if it drops off some of the bit rate or what it does, you know, their, their, their software, but, uh, It'll take 360p at one megabit, but it won't take an MPEG. Now, see, mine was 800 by 600. It's up in here. It's above that. It's between these these here, but it wouldn't take it when it's an MPEG, and so is MP4. <clears throat> and let's see. Video bit rate, high frame rate, standard frame rate. Okay, and then so higher frame rates, that's not... 12 megabits is not, I think that's what my default is on my phone is like 12 megabits. And I've probably what I've been shooting in because I love to open camera, but when I'm, I'm talking about when I record on the phone, not when I stream like I'm doing right now. Um, that, that screen went to sleep on the laptop and it, it's starting to get hot again. Well, I think I'll close the browser again. <coughs> um, I thought I was quitting a while ago. So, um, but I used to set it up as high as the thing could, could, could handle. Uh, 
and get as high quality. And you can see the difference in the video. You won't see the pixels, you know, it won't be pixelated when you get up, <clears throat> but it also makes huge file sizes. Um, and if you, well, for one thing, I don't care if I'm using IP webcam or open camera. <clears throat> when I, well, especially when I was doing that, I couldn't make I couldn't make a video any. The battery would run down in ten minutes on open camera with it set up pretty high like that. But uh, open camera was always updating, which is good. It's an open source uh, camera app. It's a really good one. You can really set things. If you know how to set it, you can do it, or you can just use it on the defaults. But every time we get an update, it would uh, lose all your settings and go back to the defaults. And I got tired of resetting it all the time, so I just used the defaults for the last couple of years now. <clears throat> but uh, recommended video bit rates for HDR uploads. What were those? SDR. Oh, S SDR, standard definition. What is R? Maybe it'll come to me at some point. <clears throat> HDR. When I saw that, I was like, oh, yeah, high, high definition. It should say HDV video R. I don't know. I just forgot. <clears throat> so anyway, okay, here we go again, but it's still, oh, okay. That's why it was so low. That's considered SDR. Now, this is high definition, 10 megabits. Now, that's at least more like it. <clears throat> and then 15 for, this is standard frame rate, and then this is higher frame rate, 15 megabits. That's getting a little more like it. Okay, so all the, what I was trying to get at is there's three main things you need to pay attention to in video. Uh, first, most people only know about is, you know, uh, the resolution, you know, 40, 480p, 720p, 1080p, and everybody just calls it 4K. I've never seen anybody even talk about 2K early at all. I read, have for years read the articles as the new technology coming out and the high-end cameras and the video bit rates and what's going on and all that, and, you know, the ultra 4K, I haven't read a lot about it yet because... It's, I haven't even got a 4K camera yet, you know, <clears throat> but uh, I mean, I haven't even got a real camera. Uh, uh, since that, I think I talked about that earlier. But, uh, the only I had a real camera once back in the 90s, late 90s. I bought a, uh, at an auction, I bought, I actually bought two video cameras, but the one that I kept, uh, it was a Sony BVP3. When it was new in the late 80s, early 90s, it was a $10,000 studio camera in the late 80s i bought i got it for 350 bucks uh, at an auction and uh, got lucky because you know f several years later three to five years later i sold it for 1500 bucks but uh <clears throat> you know you're at an um i i got lucky because there was this one camera was not owned by the company this was a, a production a, a rental company is what it was a big rental company in dallas they were selling off their old stock you know they'd evidently bought new stuff and they were selling all kinds of i was a sound i did sound for concerts and also have always loved you know video stuff and uh, my friends that run a sound company invited me to come with them well i worked with them and for them sometimes and uh um anyway um you know there was mixing boards and cameras and spe speaker cabinets and just everything under the sun cameras and uh <coughs> um this was a tube camera, and the uh, digital video had already video cameras had already been out for a few years. But they were, you know, the ones that anybody could afford to buy were like one chip, maybe two chip cameras, what they called them back then. Um, and uh, but but this was high, you know, a Sony lens and a really good lens uh, tube camera. But I didn't care that it was a tube camera or that it was big and heavy. It was actually a good. Good weight is about 25 pounds, I guess. <clears throat> good weight. You set on your shoulder good. You can shoot. With a camera like that, you can shoot very uh, stably. You know, you don't have a lot of... Uh, your movements of your body won't jack up your video like it does with a camera or you, or one of these... A phone, I mean. Phones are almost impossible for me to do a good video with. They're just so easy to... They're just so, so light and too little. Uh, <clears throat> you know, you can't... Uh, for one thing, you know, like with that camera, it has an eyepiece, and you you have to look through the eyepiece to see where you're aiming it, so you're always aware of what you're doing. Uh, with a phone, of course, you, you, you have to remind yourself to look back at the screen, and then if you go outside or 
anything else and the, you know the screen decides to go to sleep if you're outside you can't see it anymore you know <clears throat> you're just guessing at what you're shooting at so uh <clears throat> you know i'm no good at shooting with a phone uh i was pretty good with a real camera <clears throat> and anyway i had used uh learned to use those cameras see did i have that first yeah i learned i, I had volunteered on some cable tv shows um and they call cable access and in, in, in Texas, it's like a law that every cable, cable company has to have a public access, public access cable studio where you can come in and make your own videos and use their equipment. I learned how to use real cameras, uh, by volunteering on those. They train, they give us a couple of days of training. And, uh, <clears throat> so we went out and shot concerts, Christian music, Christian, I've mixed for Christian rock bands and stuff. And so, and also, after doing that for quite a few years, I uh, ended up getting involved in that. And uh, so I'd run camera and stuff. And well, I ended up like running, setting up the main like wide shot camera and then um, uh, and then running audio through a mixer to that camera to try to get good audio. And it's hard, it was too loud. I couldn't hear my headphones and it was hard to do it, get anything good. And, and plus it was way over in Dallas and it's 65, 70 miles away from me. And so I couldn't just drive back over there all, all, all the time to that studio <clears throat> and the guy that was running, you know, that, that doing the, the guy that was the like producer, you have to have a producer and the guy that the whole the guy whose project it was, uh, <clears throat> well, I mean, I said, well, I mean, I don't know what to do. Uh, you know, he's telling me, he's saying, well, I, I didn't know what the audio sounded like. I never got to hear the audio <clears throat> ever. <clears throat> so, uh, I didn't, and of course they didn't air out here where I, I didn't have cable anyway, but it didn't even air. It was a Dallas cable station and I live close to Fort Worth. So anyway, uh, I had reports that the audio wasn't very good, but I couldn't fix it because one time towards the end of doing all that, he had, they actually had a truck too. They had an audio video truck and they brought and the guy that ran the little program the, at the cable, working for the cable studio. He brought that truck out, and um, and we ran sound into out, you know, cables out to the truck, and I mixed it there. And I think that was when we finally did decent, but that we only did that, got to do that one time. <clears throat> but anyway, um, what was my point? Point being, the camera that I bought, I guess it was after that. But yeah, I'm pretty sure <clears throat> it was uh, that type of camera that we were using. We were using those two cameras in there too where uh you know the higher end studios would have uh they had uh, those cameras i don't know what they cost a hundred thousand hundred fifty thousand dollars or something that they were using at the time on tv you know <clears throat> okay now resolution aspect what's this oh audio bit rates okay so what i was saying mono 128 stereo 384 and 5.1 512 kilobits okay now that's more like it i was i snuck so why were they saying it's low bit rates up at the top there i don't know oh kilohertz well, that's kilohertz not bit rate okay that so it was my my mistake see this is kilobits per second that's how much, that's the data rate, you know, how much data is being recorded. How, <clears throat> more, the more bits, the more, I guess you could say dense your audio is, you know, it's going to sound better. And kilohertz, that's the frequency. And I can't explain that, but it's a different aspect of it. <clears throat> um, generally, when you think of frequency, you, you might think of it as your router, you know, you've got your 2.4 kilohertz, uh, no. Is it kilohertz? Your 2.4 and your 5 gigahertz. It's not kilohertz, it's gigahertz. That's a higher, larger, uh, bigger number. But in audio sample rates, anyway, you see how all the different things you can learn and can consider? Uh, <clears throat> luckily, they're, the people, the, the you know, camera makers, your phone makers, they kind of stick with a kind of in the middle of the road defaults so it will just work on youtube or wherever uh without you having to learn all this but let's see resolution and aspect ratio 
Oh, the standard aspect ratio, 16.9, that's widescreen. The 4.3 is the old 480, 720p and 480 uh, TV resolution, you know, for your regular tube TV, uh, CRT TVs. <coughs> so the flat screens like, you know, we have now. I still have an old TV here that I don't use much anymore, but a monitor is a LCD flat screen monitor. <clears throat> Other aspect ratios, vertical, square, etc. Uh, the player automatically adapts itself to the size of the video, providing the original viewing experience. But uh, providing the original view, varying viewing experience based on the aspect ratio, uh, which you may have noticed that. Uh, <clears throat> but. Uh, when you go to, you'll see something here. It might be curious to you. Let's see. I'll try to get in there that way. Oh, let's go to my live dashboard. Well, let's, I better not click on something else while it's trying to do that. Let's see. It's not showing. My, oh, because I'm not on live. It's not showing my live video because earlier I, I was like, where's my live video? There's my live video. But if I go there, it's going to play the sound through my speakers and I'll get echo. But if I go to my live dashboard, it'll be muted. So we'll go there. Did that earlier on my previous video. And I was like, oh. <clears throat> and I wasn't thinking quick enough to know what to do. To I just let it echo until I got, I just closed it. <coughs> <coughs> so there's my desktop. <clears throat> you know, looking at what I'm looking at, it's it, it's. Uh, I think my resolution is pretty close to 1080p, but you know, the size, of the aspect ratio is the same of the desktop as it is the default. Uh, what I'm set to on OBS is 1080p. Now, if I go to the camera, <clears throat> this is 720p. It's camera is only showing 720p. It should end up. Um, it's a little behind there. You can see the black bars on the right and the left. That's because of, uh, the camera is only uh, streaming out 720p. So, um, and then if you split the screen between like one and desktop, camera and desktop, then it gets the whole width, but you've got, <clears throat> but it's, it's not as tall. So now you've got a wide, <laughs> really wide, but not very tall video. And that's because I'm getting two, seven, two 720s. Actually, with the with the desktop, you're getting a 720 on the right and a 1080 on the left, but it's shrunk down to a smaller size to fit in that space. If I'm doing two cameras, I don't have two running right now. I can't show it. They'll be equal, 720, 720, and they'll just fit in there. And that has to do with the way I set up my running right now. I can't. It has to do with the way I set up my uh, OBS Studio. And uh, go back to the desktop again. <clears throat> so, um, and I'm running right now. I am getting set 30 frames per second. It will fluctuate. It's a, a variable bit rate. Or, well, bit rate would you say that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that bit rate business. Anyway, the frames per second does not, <clears throat> it tries to do 30 frames per second, but you will see it changing. Sometimes I've seen it down at it's 15 frames or even 7. When my cameras aren't working too great. I'm not streaming too great. But this is desktop right now, so. Uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. I, I used to didn't remember, but the, most of your information on your video is right down here on a, in OBS. There's my kilobits, 4,140 4, kilobits per second, <clears throat> my stream. That's what it's doing. So that's pretty good um, that you can do that. And, oh, and I was kind of saying, kind of complaining a while ago, uh, I got off of it, but, uh, I, you know, with my internet service, I have 200 megabits download speed and only 10 up. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, you can't upload, uploading, if you, if you try to, if you upload uh, in it, and I used to, YouTube would uh, kill my, it would kill my internet per, uh, connection every time I uploaded a video for years. And uh, I thought maybe it was something to do with my wiring or something, but it's actually gotten better. Uh, I think they just, well, I didn't used to have 10 megabits up. I had four or five, four, I think it was. That's probably all it was right there. Even when we had 100 megabits down, we had like four up. 
finally got us to 10. But really, if you're if you with 200 megabits down, in order to have a, a really well working up and down speed, you would need at least 100 up. And you're not, you know, they're not given that. <clears throat> there are some services that give the same up and down, uh, but it's usually not. I don't know if any of them are 100 megabits, and there might be 50 or 75 or something. <clears throat> I saw an ad, the highest I'd ever seen. I just happened to walk by, and the TV was on. I don't sit and watch TV much. I sit and watch YouTube. Really, that's probably, mostly all I watch is YouTube. But sometimes I watch it on other sites. But I'm either making a YouTube video or watching one. But uh, there was a service. I don't even doubt they're even available here where I live, but they were on TV saying a pretty, pretty decent up and down the same. I was like, that would be cool. And I've always been interested in that because I've been running my own web server for my websites and for my music on my websites for years and years. Now. <clears throat> and uh, that's a big factor. If I had a lot of traffic on my websites, I'd be in real trouble. with t Even with 10 megabits, it wouldn't be enough. I would use up all my bandwidth, and I wouldn't be able to do anything on the Internet. So... Uh, <clears throat> so that's why I always install fail demand on my... <laughs> servers so that if people start one of the first one of the memories quite a few years ago now but you know people didn't used to bother your you so much or your your servers and stuff so much but where they got to run in scripts that were trying to log into my i used to run ftp servers instead of files but there wasn't any login it was just there and you just you didn't upload anything you just downloaded or just looked at it you know share my music and stuff and pictures and stuff and maybe a small video or two that I had made, you know. And um, um, anyway, they start kept trying to run scripts and log into my. I would see in my server logs of hundred, you know, hundreds of failed login attempts, maybe fifty or so done a day, you know. And so I, uh, I don't even remember how I found failed to man. There's some other applications that come actually when you install Fedora Server Edition, you get a bunch of nice security stuff. But fail demand is one that I learned about years ago, and what it does is, uh, if you get something like five to seven, or you know, it's, the default is five or seven failed login attempts, then it blocks that IP and it won't let them back into your server anymore. So they keep it'll just automatically keep blocking those IPs, keeping them from doing it, uh, because uh, that'll you know they're not they're not going to log into something that can't be logged into. There's no there was no login allowed, but. Uh, <clears throat> Um, um, <clears throat> they will use up your bandwidth doing that crap. And then that would get, you know, if it happened too much, it ended to, to be, and you've always heard of the denial, denial of service attacks, the mo one of the most common attacks on servers that will take them down, you know. I never had anything like that happen that I know of. I did notice my, I always monitor my website and see if it's up, and <clears throat> I notice it going up and down, up and down. And it still does that to this day, uh, up down for a few seconds to a minute and back up. Uh, and I still have no, I, I'm not, I, but then when I go look at my server logs, I'm not seeing a bunch of traffic that, you know, suspicious traffic. I still have not quite figured out why it's, it's still, that was years ago when it was real bad. And after I started adding more security apps to my servers, then got rid of all that trouble like that but uh, yeah I don't know what's uh, um, let's see it just reminded me that I, I haven't checked I assume my server's up and running just fine but with all this <clears throat> all I know for sure is that the laptop's running and well it's been up for two days with no problems so but, uh, but that, this one doesn't check as often, and, uh, but you can just click on that button and say check right now. So as far as this one knows, let's see. Oh, it's checking more often than every six hours. Uh, I don't remember. You'd have to go into the settings. But it, it's, uh, if you add, see, it, the default is, I think it's checking every 30 minutes or something like that. I don't want it. Well, you can't go any lower than that. I might have it on every three hours. If you... Have it checked too often, then it, it will drive you crazy sending you emails saying your, your website's down, your website's down for just just like a timeout error. That, that what I'm timeout error, I mean, 
depending on what's uh it looks like they're not uh up right now <clears throat> i was going to go to that one and show oh there it goes <laughs> yeah okay see it was down what oh it was down for one minute bad gateway and so really that's just that the page didn't load fast enough and i don't know why uh that doesn't matter what i you know if i'm on that when i was on the acer it's a dual core with two gig of ram this is a single core with one gig of ram uh that i'm running right now and then i before that, I was running a single core with two gig of RAM. Uh, it, for the last several years, this just happens, and I have not been able to figure out why. I didn't like it at all. But even so, and I've, it's been down for like a week or two ago. I didn't know it was down. Oh, when uh, the Acer quit working right, it wasn't right. It wasn't working. Uh, it wasn't booting up, <clears throat> and I didn't. It's so quiet. I didn't know. I didn't notice. And. Uh, so it was down for two days or something. I didn't know it. So, but it used to say it's 96 to 98 percent uptime average. I see it's at 94 now, and of course it gets better as long the longer you stay up without being down for any long amounts of time. But okay, here the other day. No, so I don't see any long periods. I, I I'm tired, but anyway. <clears throat> Uh, but I don't put, I don't put, I have a few videos still on there, just a couple of old videos that I put on there. Uh, they don't, I don't think they'll stream most of them. You have to download them and then watch them. But uh, uh, my music, you can either play it or download it, but they're just MP3s. They're not, they don't use up a lot of traffic. Heck, there's lots of web pages that use a lot more traffic than one of my MP3s would, you know, more data. <coughs> so, uh, even if you download them all, you know, that wouldn't be a problem for my bandwidth. <coughs> but uh, the way my website's set up, you're going to have to download them one at a time. I used to <coughs> have my FTP server running, and I had zip files with all this, you know, all the songs of an album in a zip file. and and But really, <coughs> I don't, you know, anybody that ever contacted me, they'd say, how do you do that? You know, they didn't, even, they didn't know how to do it at all, so... <coughs> Nobody, hardly any, I mean, I didn't have a way to know for sure, uh, you know, how many times those files were downloaded or anything. <coughs> I used to have hit counters and stuff on there that were third party, you know, they were codes you put on there like Java code and stuff. And then it would be <coughs> run, you know, it was written and run by a third party free, you know, free stuff. Uh, but then over the years, I finally got all that junk off there because a couple of three years ago I started seeing weird ads for weird games pop up on my website and it turns out it was an old hit counter traffic counter <clears throat> that uh, was no longer owned by whoever originally made it somebody was in control of it or bought it or something and they were running these games and it was uh, didn't seem to be malware in it I inspected that code up and down and left and right because <clears throat> I would save it and look through it and Run, of course, I ran scanners on the files and stuff. I'd say, right, you, know, you just hear and save the page as, and then I ran scans on those pages. But I also inspected the code. That's how I finally figured out where it was. Try they they were knew what they were. They were up to no good because they were hiding where it was coming from. And I finally found where it was came, coming from. It was really tough to figure out. <clears throat> but that's um, code injection is what it is. Code injection is what it is. And that's what was going on with that. And, those uh, that hit counter is the exact same code I put on there, you know, years and years ago. But they had uh, intercepted it somehow, either intercepted it on the way to the site. I imagine the site was no, I couldn't find the site, the, you know, the name of that site anymore. It was defunct. It wasn't there anymore. So somehow they had taken that over and <clears throat> and serving up their ads, uh, trying to sell, evidently trying to sell games. You know, at first I thought it was malware, but uh, it looked like they were really just. Dirty under now. Who would buy something from somebody that's under that underhanded? I don't see how that would be successful for them. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, they were evidently all they were trying to do is sell their games, and supposedly it was a popular game because I did some research on the game. I don't even remember what it was now, but um, okay, one 
I'm going to say one last thing, and maybe I'll be telling the truth. <clears throat> Handbrake. Yeah, I, it, like I said uh, earlier, it is available in Fedora, or in Fedora 28 anyway. And so it used to be, I never could find it in Fedora before. But uh, uh, <clears throat> this is the setting is that I did. Uh, H.264, it says up to 1080p, 30 frames per second, and AAC stereo audio in MP4 container. I added that web optimized so that it will not just uh, stream only. I changed the default just a little and then saved it as, uh, yes, yeah, it says Dawn Fast. Uh, I think I should have a couple in there somewhere. Yeah, here's where I don't know where you get yours. I never looked back in here again since I did that. But see, they call it. Then we want to realize what are they talking about? Very fast, fast. You know, HQ, I know, high quality, super HQ, super high quality. Okay, so what's fast and very fast and final? And I, what I decided I wanted, I hadn't tried it yet, but I saw how much of my CP. It was using all, uh, almost all all four CPUs cores. So. Uh, <clears throat> I set another, uh, I redid my settings just like I wanted them, but except for on uh, 1080p fast, because I think what fast means is how fast it encodes the file <coughs> or transcode. <coughs> so the faster it is, the more, you know, CPU on your, more system resources it's going to use. So I haven't tried it yet, but I believe <coughs> that will not tax the system as much when I use it again. Um, <coughs> so, uh, here is the i did get to show that the auto crop was defaulted and that was fine now it's not showing oh it, it see it's showing width and height 1920 by 1080. oh the height's 1080 and the width is 1920. i've been saying that wrong i always get that wrong but it's not 1080 wide it's 1080 high it's 1920 wide so why did they cut you see to me i don't say you know i think of the width first and the height second not the other way around but so when they say 1080p they're talking about the height <clears throat> when they say 720p they're talking about now okay here you go look at that 720p that's the width okay what in the world no wonder i get confused so why did they do that when they start naming things 720p was the width that's probably where i got that in my cemented in my brain but now 1080p is actually the height. <clears throat> That's a default. You know, I didn't set that or anything. <clears throat> and actually, if you add, give it a file, where do you, okay, open source. I thought that was like they're going to tell you about how great and wonderful the software was. Open, it's open source software, and it is open source software, but it should say open a file, not open source, you know. Open a file to transcode. It's weird and silly. Uh, okay, is this my Baser, uh, 17 splitter Don replacing wheel bearings? Yes, okay, let's see now. Okay, two is the one I did last time, so if I was going to do it, now you can select, I think you can do that. Okay, I'm holding down, oh, it won't let you select a bunch at once. I was holding down shift. You may not be able to, you can only select one at a time? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess you do one at a time, and then... And then you can, uh, I think you can go in here and say, uh, add to queue. Oh, no, that just adds that file to the queue. Uh, maybe then I could go add more. Well, let's find out. If they're not in the right order, five, four. Hmm. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. So I guess, I don't know if you need to hit add to queue or not, <coughs> but uh, that's four. I don't know if I lost the other one or what. I haven't been using it for, for I thought you could. I know the last time I used it you, several years ago, you could. But uh, you could add a whole folder of files. There was multiple ways to add files, which you just, I don't know if you can do that or not and tell it to do all the files. I thought you could just add a folder and tell it to do every file in that folder that, that was a video file, but I don't know. <coughs> um, anyway, notice it changed the 800 by 600 now. Uh, and see, everything's changed to eight. That's what size that video really is. And it works just fine. Uh, 
And that's what that cropping is about. I think it crops out the black bars because you don't want to encode black bars on your video. Uh, with YouTube, it can actually give you more black bars and make your video look really small. <clears throat> uh, you definitely don't want that. It just makes your video file bigger. I mean, that's all data. Uh, it may not be the picture, but it's all data. It's going to make your video file bigger. It's going to make, uh, I don't know what all it'll affect. Okay, so, oh, let's go back over here. But my, yeah, see, now if you go to the summary, you, you have a pre a screen, uh, a thumbnail uh, that auto generates that, and it shows you what your file is, like I was showing earlier in the video. <clears throat> and it sees it as a H264, which I don't see how, I don't think H264 was even out yet when I made those. Maybe it was, and I didn't re realize it. And an aspect ratio of 4.3, see, it's a square, more, it's not, I guess it's not square, but it's not 60. Yeah, it's not square, 800 by 600. Okay, and uh, here's the, uh, where I was, auto crop. And then the filters, let's see, yeah, I used a denoise filter, the NL means, there's only two to choose from, and I just, uh, I put it on each one, and then I, Click the preview, and I thought this one looked a tad bit better. <clears throat> uh, these are low, you know, low resolution videos, so they're not uh, very good. It's uh, 7:40, 8 43. I'll go ahead and stop it this time. Uh, <clears throat> now, you, now the way to you can actually make them a lot better. Uh, than this by you know going in Kden Live or some other good uh, good video editor and I uh, like when you render them do like three or four passes and it, you'll notice the difference it'll get better you're not uh, but I looked for years I tried to find like <clears throat> well I had a DVD recorder player with a HD tuner in it uh, and actually the player doesn't work anymore but it had what they called upscaling built into it and if you uh, well, if you, if you, uh, you know, say played a VCR tape through it and then recorded it on DVD, it would be a better, noticeably better resolution. And, uh, there used to be <clears throat> around that time years ago, uh, when was that? Well, when HD first came out, HD TV, uh, during those years, right before that, there was software when, back when I was doing windows, I used to see, this is the coming thing, you know, what back in, uh. I can't remember what year. Oh, oh five. Before, right before oh five, and after, right after two thousand and five, uh, when I was doing Windows, I was seeing software begin to come available to upscale. I don't remember if that's the word they use, but to upscale your video, to you know, raise the resolution and everything of your video. And it, but it was, <clears throat> you know, really CPU and, and and memory intensive, and it took hours and hours to do that to a video. So I never really got into it. <clears throat> then once I got into Linux, I kept in the heaven in the back of my mind. Boy, one day when somebody, I hope somebody comes up with some open source software to do that, you know, I'll use it. I haven't looked in a couple of three years, really. Um, well, maybe I have. I've seen some articles on some stuff. But the last thing I saw that could really do an amazing thing was they call it AI software, artificial intelligence software. Uh, and it's all really, it's the, uh, you know, the ATI and NVIDIA video GPU builders that are into that stuff. They're doing it. They're doing it for games. It's all done in real time. Uh, but uh, there were some video sample videos they made where they had uh, some pretty grainy pictures of cars. And uh, well, what they were doing, and they weren't just making a video like saying, make this picture here look better, but they were making... Uh, 3D. They were taking multiple pictures, putting them together with AI, using AI to, to make a 3D image, you know, a video out of a bunch of pictures, which is really cool. But all I want to do <clears throat> is just take a low resolution video like this, and <clears throat> it's basically animation, you know. Uh, I think you might be able to do it with some of these animation software that's just over my head. I uh, can't remember the names of them. Uh, uh, Anyway, it will take and basically just copy each dot <laughs> over to the next space until it starts looking good, you know, <clears throat> looking better. Um, 
I, I can imagine it in my head anyway because I used to do that with pictures, you know, with uh, GIMP, you know, image editor or something. <coughs> but before that, I used, you know, Paint Shop Pro <coughs> and Windows. <coughs> but uh, anyway, um, by now, I really can't believe there's not some you know, really easy to use open source software that will just, you know, re-render a video, make it look better. Uh, maybe I missed it, <clears throat> but I haven't found any yet. Maybe there is for Windows. Maybe sometimes, you know, Linux uh, programmers, they, they just make everything you can imagine and more. But <clears throat> there's a few things here and there that, that might actually be made and ready to use on Windows. It's actually even freeware or something that, Linux people just didn't decide to do, you know. I haven't looked in Windows software. I don't pay much attention to it at all anymore, <coughs> so I don't know. But, uh, I don't even have a Windows machine, <coughs> but uh, I have a XP virtual machine on this one. That's about, that's all I got that I run Windows right now. So anyway, uh, the the video, the encoder, <coughs> it's two sixty four. It's going for thirty frame thirty frames per second. Uh, it is a variable frame rate, peak frame rate. Uh, <clears throat> that'd be the peak. Um, and then constant, yeah, quality. Oh, it is doing two pass encoding. I do think it did come out looking a little better than the original, the one that I did. Uh, and I think that's because I used that filter, that one right there. And that two pass must have been, it must have helped some too. Uh, and I didn't change any of these defaults. These are all defaults. The audio is uh, MPEG, 44.1 kilohertz, uh, AAC, so that was already the thing that uh, YouTube wants anyway, so that was okay. Didn't have to change it. Track selection, you could get into that, but... Uh, <coughs> Well, I guess if you had, hmm, I don't know if that's got to do with like 5.1, you know, this is stereo. That might be more for, oh, I see, yeah. So I'm not, you know, I'm on a stereo and I definitely don't, I wouldn't try to change it from that at all. Uh, I don't think it would uh, automatically up mix it to, you know, I think 5.1 is the only other, the most that, I can't remember now. I was just going over that. YouTube would take anyway, <clears throat> but it wouldn't do you much good. A lot, most of the time, most everybody is watching YouTube in stereo, I think, still. I don't think too many of them are using 5.1 or 7.1. Uh, and whenever you go and try to play 5.1 on a stereo, well, that actually works okay, unless it's digital, like with, unless you've got, <clears throat> had a real deal with the TV, you know, uh, Got a new TV and uh, wanted to add a you know a nice speaker sound bar to it or a speaker set. Well, I end up getting a sound bar, but the sound bar was analog input and the TV was a digital Dolby digital output, not just digital but Dolby digital. I had to buy a com converter that would uh, take Dolby digital and then convert it to analog. Uh, I spent another you know 35 bucks or well, I think it was 20 or 25 bucks, <clears throat> but it has worked for several years now, just fine. Sometimes it'll act up and you got to reboot it or wiggle, uh, twist the wires and make sure they're not getting corroded. The connection's still good. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, with audio cables, you need to, and video cables too, you, if, if they can be twisted, you need to just, just twist them a little better once in a while and, and make sure the corrosion is broken up and it doesn't build up on them. Subtitles, yeah, I don't want it. I don't like subtitles hardly at all. I don't mess with any of that. But I don't know about all this. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. You, that's some features that I don't even know how to use, uh, how you would handle that, or the track selection stuff. That seems to me that this is audio. Yeah, see, there's languages and stuff. Like it's like it's, It seems like subtitles, things they're talking about. I don't know. Um, well, it's only got... I suppose you could have more, you know, if, like I said, if it was, uh, oh, well, maybe you need to tell it what language you're in so that when you turn on the subtitles, 
you get you know they match. Uh, I don't think it will auto generate subtitles. Certainly not. That'd be a smart piece of software, wouldn't it? <clears throat> and then chapters. It's only one chapter. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That would that, that's talking like DVD stuff, you know, that has multi chapters and all that stuff. But um, anyway, it's a really good encoder <clears throat> and uh, transcoder. Transcoder is when you you know you start with you've already got a video and you just want to change it to a different encoding. You know, like I want to go from MPEG to MPEG four, <clears throat> and um, plus you got to have the audio. It it does default to audio that YouTube will accept, so I'm all good. Well, I, actually, my audio was already AAC, so. Uh, that's what I'm going to, it's not going to have to be changed. It's just going to be copied. Uh, I think it's AAC and 44.1 kilohertz. That's the two main things you want to pay attention to with in this, in this instance. And uh, <clears throat> I don't think it shows the kilohertz here, but uh, this is what the file, original file is. And then this is what you're going to get here. So uh, I still say that it's not H.264. I think that's just what it sees it as because I guess because it can't see. Yeah, I don't know how it deals with it when it doesn't see. I don't really know. Uh, sometimes I do know that so I've seen it over and over. Software will go back as old as, you know, as far back as it when it was written, whatever was available when it was written. And anything older than that, it just puts in <laughs> what it, what it knows, you know, and not what it really is. Some other software will actually go back and see, oh, that's an old MPEG, you know, and it'll call it that. But anyway, it works. <clears throat> and uh, you can even put tags in there, and there's a title, and that's all. So there is a title tag it, it gets put into the file. So um, I'm not going to do this. Oh, show presets window. Yeah, see, so you go over there. I don't know. I guess you can go over there and click on those uh, instead of going there to get those. But, yeah, there's a good way to read through them. Uh, then there's the web presets. Let's see. If you go a little bigger. Yeah, I see, like, Gmail. I mean, Gmail doesn't play video. Why did they name it that? <laughs> Does it? <laughs> oh. I guess what it is is it will, uh, yeah, it says three minutes, Gmail large three minutes, medium five minutes, small 10 minutes. Um, okay, let's read what it says. Encoding up to 10 minutes of video and small size for Gmail, 25 megabyte or less. That's what I was going to say. Gmail, yeah, okay, I didn't remember. Gmail will go up to 25 megabyte of a f attachment. Um, my internet service provider will only go up to 10 megabytes so it you know nothing's that that small that used to be big now it's small so yeah I hardly ever uh, only thing i attach to my emails is you know pdfs and, and images and stuff ever you know of course any anytime you have an image it's automatically attached whether you go up and select attach or not you know like you can copy and paste it into the email well it automatically attaches it but it just shows it in line they call it Attachments generally, especially in Gmail, they won't show up in the body of the email. They'll just be down there at the bottom, kind of where that file name is, you know, and you have to download them, which most people don't know how to do anymore. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so, yeah, that one there, it's a little bit different. Uh, better format, you know, it's 720p, 30 frames per second, AAC stereo, so you could attach that to Gmail. So I guess it's trying to simplify, you could, uh, you know, helping people attach videos to emails. Vimeo YouTube. I read that the other day and I was like, what? What the heck? You know, sometimes you see videos that have the Vimeo. I know what, Vimeo is another web video website. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, but you'll see them, ma videos made for Vimeo with that little tag and little, um, watermark in them on youtube and other places but uh, well let's, let's see what this says hq and, and they're all about like high quality uh there's some really good artists you know sure enough artists on vimeo um anyway they're all about high quality video notice the smallest thing they got is 720p 
This says high quality, HD 64, up to 2160p, 60 frames per second, high bit rate. I'm going to try to read it on my throat, starting to get scratchy. And then supporting 4K video such as Vimeo and YouTube. That's what it means. They should have put a dash or slash. They should have put Vimeo slash YouTube. Then it would make sense. Anyway, so you could use those for YouTube presets, uh, except there's no 1080p 30 frames per second there. So it doesn't help you. And you can really get yourself in trouble. Let's see. Unless it's up to. Up to, okay, high quality, up to 1080p, 60 frames per second. So you could use that. And since I've already ran it, you know, in the, the settings I used, which were 1080p, 30 frames per second, I now see that that would work too. So if you didn't know anything about how to set it and you just knew, oh, I want, you maybe you knew I have 1080p and you, and you hovered over that and you read that note, then you would probably see... Yeah, that should work for my video, uh, if you even know what your video is. <laughs> Let's assume you know that much. You know that you got a 1080p, and you know you have 30 or 60 frames per second or somewhere in between. Uh, or 20, you know, the most common are, that I see these days is 25, 30, and 60. For some reason, a lot of cameras like to shoot in 25 frames per second by default. And I'm not talking about what you could do if you, you know, were professional type and you knew how to set everything. Devices. Uh, so, you know, this is kind of, actually it's so much stuff it looks confusing to me at first glance, but I haven't, that's the first time I've drilled down into this. So uh, I'm starting to realize that that could be helpful to, I'm, I, say, I know what I want and I'm looking for it, you know. And luckily that's at the top. Except for that fast and very fast threw me off at first. I was like, Generally, fast is less quality, and very fast is even less quality. That's what I was thinking. But it means how fast it encodes it, I finally, I think I figured it out. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and what that means is the very fast is, like I said, it, my machine, quad core, the 4 gig of RAM, it used 99.99% of all of the CPUs the whole time it was doing. All the CPU cores. But then it see it has target devices here. Uh, so that would be a quick way for anybody to get what they need. They know I want to play it on this. then, And they have to have an idea where they know it's a 1080 or a 720 or whatever. Then they would know that. Uh, <clears throat> and then Matroska is another video format. Let's see. I think that might be the only other type that, uh, yeah, I believe it is because there's the VP8. That's the only other VP9. Yeah, that's the only other top that YouTube accepts. <coughs> I didn't really remember that Matroska was, you know, VP8 and WebM. It doesn't say WebM, but I happen to know that WebM is VP8 and VP9 <coughs> fit under that. But you can also have a OH265. And H264 MKV. Well, I've used, I used to encode things in MKV just oddly enough. They're all seeing the file format is, uh, <coughs> file extension is MKV. Uh, in the MKV container. Uh, usually that's the file extension they use. Uh, but uh, WebM usually uses WebM. WBM <clears throat> as a file extension, but I'm almost certain I could be sitting there staring somebody wrong saying VP uh, 8 and 9 is the same thing as WebM, but I'm pretty sure it is. I get things all in my head, and then, you know, as time goes by, it gets mixed up. So do your research <laughs> before you completely go by what anybody tells you. I've seen so many people. Just tell you this is how it is, and I know they're just dead wrong, you know, with some of this audio video stuff I've been doing since, <clears throat> you know, 1983. Uh, especially when they start trying, these young people start trying to talk about analog audio gear and stuff like that. And 
explaining how it works, you know, and what it, what it does or did, you know, because they don't use it and they never did use it, you know, <clears throat> but, uh, it's what I grew up on. So, but I did, I was into computers. I started getting into computers really heavily in 98 and the internet. And so as it was, this stuff was coming out, I was trying to, you know, trying to keep up with it. I was, I kept up with it. Just that my memory is not ever been, used to be way better than it is now for all that, but, uh, yeah, it's not so good at all anymore. I, I have the general idea on everything that I used to know, but I don't have the details like I used to in my head. What's this? Production. Production Max. Now, that's kind of weird. Production Max. I'm sure production companies use things like that. Yeah, let's do this in Production Max. Stat. <laughs> <coughs> What? Okay, maximum bit rate, constant frame rate, H.264 video and high bit rate. For one thing, they don't do H.264 anymore in production. They do H.265, from what I understand. Actually, I read those articles I was talking about earlier that they they're all doing H.265 and high end video. <coughs> for professional use and intermediate. Or editing video creates gigantic files, so it kind of gives you a general idea. But H.265 is the is the one that all the pros want to use now. It's <clears throat> well, from what I read, it's got a uh, better. They call it a better a compression rate. Then the compression rate, the compression rate is better, so you get a better quality file. Actually, if you had the Two same files, one in H.264 video files and the other one in H.265. The H.265 could be a higher quality uh, for smaller file size. That's what I get <coughs> uh, than H.264. Um, what I re if I remember what I now just read all this stuff, you know, recently. I uh, I don't I haven't been. Well, YouTube wasn't supporting H.265, and I only used it, if I ever used it, it was because it was the default for whatever application I was using. But uh, I don't know that I've ever made any videos in H.265. I might have made one or two on purpose and uh, see if I could tell any difference out of, in KDN Live or something. It's been out for at least a couple of three years. I don't remember how long it's been out, but it's actually, supposed, I think it's the new standard. <laughs> but YouTube, you know, it. I guess it stays a little behind because it, it's kind of the video for the masses, you know, and uh, you know, like me, I'm using these. These are pretty old cameras now, phone cameras, <clears throat> and uh, you know, all the, if you buy a new phone now, brand new phone. Yeah, I think you're going to be having 10, 12, maybe even more megapixels in your camera, you know. Uh, plus all the other little things I've been going through here. You know, everything's going to be better. <clears throat> so, yeah, this um, this is a cool program, and it is easy to use. Um, I And we do need to pay some attention to what you have, like your aspect ratio and your... Uh, what the video file that you put that you're gonna transcode and what you want to transcode it to, you gotta learn something about it. But <clears throat> you can almost just put most, you know, the most common video. Well, I guess they're the most common, most common uh, low, mid, low to mid range camera video files. You can put them in here and transcode them to the default without ever changing a thing, and you'll be be doing pretty. Uh, but I did go, I thought, I just thought it'd be interesting to go over some of the things that I, you know, that like what I did and how, how it works, the, what the parts I know of how it works. Oh, there's the queue. Yeah. Okay. Right there. Top right. Yeah. So it would be doing those two files that I put in there. <clears throat> and since this machine has been running way over 24 hours now, there's no way I would try to make it do that. <clears throat> Presets, yeah, we just went through that. <clears throat> Video preview. <coughs> Activity actually is a terminal window <coughs> <coughs> of the, uh, the program <coughs> it's been doing. I guess it's more of a log file. It looks like a terminal window, but 
looking at over here, uh, it's not a regular terminal window. So I think it's some some programs actually you can open up a terminal window and see what's going on in its in its terminal window. Uh, I think this is more of a log file. Uh, yeah, it says it right there. Activity log. It's an activity log. That's cool though. And of course, there's that preview, and I guess you can set it to even more than two seconds, but I wouldn't try that. You can <clears throat> show crop. Let's see what happens if you sh show crop. I didn't even notice that before. <clears throat> yeah, you would want to know if you were cropping out something that you actually don't want to lose. But see, that nothing it's, changed. Uh... Nothing changed. So I, I had, but I, I didn't realize you really need to turn on show. Source resolution, what's that? Oh. Okay, so this will be a preview of the source. How do you get it to? I don't know. There you go. It's, uh... Yeah, see, I didn't want to change my resolution. <clears throat> okay, so will it come back to... I lost my... lost that little... I don't know, maybe when I close the program and open it back up, it'll come back, but it went away. I didn't want it to go away. I say, how do you get rid of the, oh, get rid of the queue like that. You click on them, they show up, and then you click on them again, they go away. And uh, the folder, I went ahead and made me, it defaulted to my videos folder, but I wanted it, made me a handbrake folder inside of my videos folder. <clears throat> uh, and then pointed it to that. <clears throat> So I'm not going to do that and get out of there. And uh, now I've gone on forever. I, I went and stopped my... <clears throat> I'll, I'm not going to try to open it. I'll just open it up here to look at it for a, minute, for a second. But I went ahead and stopped my preview because it was working that machine too hard. <clears throat> well, that's curious. No telling what that is. <clears throat> Looks like I'm doing okay, though. So uh, that's <coughs> curious. Yep, still working. Okay. Um, you see, uh, this is the viewer, the web viewer for my camera. Let's see, now you can see. <coughs> Took me about half sleep over there. <coughs> and uh, I'm not streaming audio from that camera. I'm streaming audio from... That one there, I suppose it would uh, play audio. If I, you have to pick the one that'll work. You pick the your, one that'll work. For yeah, your, I can barely hear it. Yeah. <clears throat> you pick the one that will work on your web browser. I just happen to know which ones will work and which ones won't. So I'm a straight pick. But uh, so <clears throat> I think I must have scooted down up. I don't know if I scooted down in the chair more or my camera moved or what. <laughs> I don't care. I'm tired. I'm ready to go. <clears throat> um, just seems like I looked like I'm really, maybe I just leaned back more or something. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, I'm talking to them about, about fall asleep. <laughs> anyway, there's um, whatever it was I just went through. <laughs> Uh, well, the main thing I was wanting to show and share was <clears throat> all the trouble that some of the seemingly simplest things to do can be, uh, you know, uploading and transferring files from photos to YouTube, uploading to YouTube. <clears throat> I wanted to show what, what I figured out, what I went through, what I figured out, so maybe anybody's to watch this, some of this video enough of this video to see uh, what my problem was and how I got how I'm getting around it of course any good transcoder would would uh, you know change it to uh, like if <clears throat> I don't know if handbrakes available on Windows I think it is um, there's you know lots of other transcoders you could use you can you could just if you're used to editing videos and you could just pop the video into you know, say I, I say get in live because that's my favorite video editor. <clears throat> it's free and open source and pretty really powerful. Uh, but you could open up the video in there, and, and then let's say you wanted to 
normalize the audio it'll do that it'll do it has a lot of audio filters I like, that's one thing i like about it it has things that a lot of the rest of them don't have and you could uh you could do a little work on making like say those those low resolution videos making them look a little better like i said i learned years ago with Caden live you can tell it to do i don't know if you can do more than three passes i never did more than three because my uh, if i did an hour or hour and a half long video it would uh it would take all night you know it would take uh 16 to 24 hours to render the video so and that's just more than as much as i can stand of having that machine running right next to my bed you know when i'm asleep and then running all day while i'm on the computer i would do it on a different machine i can't i've never had a machine powerful enough to uh, <clears throat> render videos while i'm running running them working on the machine well years ago actually years ago i could do that on my pentium 4 when i was running windows xp on it with some of the but it did i had to be careful because if you work the machine too hard it would mess up your render it's just like if you'd work them work the machine hardly at all when you're burning a cd or a dvd it would mess that up but you didn't know that unless you're old enough to remember all that stuff but um it's not that long ago that people were doing that all the time but <clears throat> anyway i've just seen noticing that more and more that you know people that are 20 something 25 years old i guess uh, they just think it's so weird and so ancient to burn dvds and cds and all that stuff you know or <clears throat> and floppy drives that's like you know dinosaurs or something <laughs> it's just like that floppy's right there man <laughs> Make, i might need that you know <laughs> I don't only have that one that that Pentium four that will has a floppy drive in it, but there's a bunch more out in the garage and a couple at the van outside. But <clears throat> I put a bunch of stuff in my van. Because <clears throat> <coughs> <coughs> it's my project van, I have got I'm supposed to be fixing it up, <clears throat> but I ended up putting some stuff in it too. Ran room in the garage. Uh, okay, so um, uh, <clears throat> anyway, um, I don't know. I was trying to wrap it up here, but I've got myself turned around again. <clears throat> um, yeah, <clears throat> that's why all this. What I was making this video about is why I told, well, as soon as I found OBS Studio, I've tried streaming things before and they were really hard to use. <clears throat> and they worked the machines too hard and the machines couldn't keep up with it that I had. OBS Studio, it will run, it would, I don't know if it would now, but when it first came out, <clears throat> it would run on a dual core. Uh, but you, after an hour, hour and a half, you know, it's beginning to, uh, it's beginning to work it pretty hard and you couldn't really i couldn't really run it on any of my dual core laptops they would just shut out it overheat and shut out uh, or, or i don't know if they were complete well they sounded like they i mean they were running the fans full blast and making noise i tried it on windows and on linux and it worked better in linux the, the, the obs version you know in linux worked better than windows on the dell 1525 laptop but uh in Windows 7, all, that's what it came with when I got it. I think it came with Vista originally. No, no, that was the Acer that came with Vista. I don't know. But anyway, it had Windows 7 on it. And what I did was dual boot it, you know, Windows 7 on half the hard drive and Linux on the other half. And uh, it, uh, it would just, you know, the fan would start running real fast. Like I was talking about the uh, old Dell 6000 up here doing... And then before you know it, you'd be in the middle of a sense and it would just shut itself down. And it would do it every time with Windows. But on Linux, uh, with Fedora, I don't think I ever tried it. I don't even know if it would run on Domain back then. I don't know. But anyway, on Linux, it would do it, but you wouldn't get more than an hour. Uh, what I, well, Basically, what I can vaguely remember, more than an hour, hour and a half. And me, I'm always going forever, making my screams. <clears throat> but... Uh, um, what I love about streaming is there's so much, you know, you can switch cameras, you can just do all this stuff. Well, especially since I used to run sound from bands, that's just natural to me to do things live. 
And so you can switch cameras, you can switch mics. And when you're done, you do not have to edit and upload. It is already uploaded. You just have to, and what I, I always have to do is kind of watch back through the video. Well, I want to see that, it, you know, if there's any real problems with it, and if it's broken here or there. Sometimes your stream goes down and goes back up. <clears throat> that happens, in a, and of course, I usually know that because I'm trying to watch the stream. Unless I have to turn off my monitor, you know, like I did today. <clears throat> um, anyway, I look back through, and that's why I always make a backup video. I, re I stream and record at the same time. Oh, you can ask waving my mouse around at the buttons like you can see them. You can't see them. You see me. Uh, anyway, uh, the backup video, sometimes I have had to upload them. And, and uh, so what I do is just upload the backup video and then make the original stream a private video. <coughs> I don't want to delete it in case I need it. <coughs> but... Um, um, Definitely the way I like to do it. Of course, if you mess something up, it's messed up. <clears throat> Can't, well, I mean, you could always go back and edit that, <clears throat> you know, that video that you, well, you can download them from YouTube, but they're not as good a quality as your original. They're, you, they're, <clears throat> they do down, well, I don't know, maybe my quality. They might be the same as my quality. But, man, oh, <clears throat> used to, I could see the difference between my original video and the one I downloaded from YouTube. And you can see the, you know, you look in the, you write, see the properties of the video, like play it in VLC and look at the properties is a quick, easy way to do that. Uh, there's just lots of ways to see the, the video properties, but um, uh, you can actually visually see the difference between your original and the one you downloaded sometimes on YouTube. Um, so anyway, um, Well, so if you're going to edit, you keep an original, keep making a re record your video, don't just stream it. <clears throat> and then your original, if you need to, just as a backup to upload, if the stream got broken once or twice or three times in the stream, which has happened to me a few times. Uh, <clears throat> see, what it'll do, it will, it will re like it might go down and you might just lose 30 seconds or something, you know. As long as it's not too long, it will actually just seamlessly uh, stitch those, you know, it breaks, loses your stream, and if it comes back up soon enough, then the uh, the video that got streamed will just have some cut, you know. It'll have a cut in there, missing some words and stuff, missing some hands waving around, you know. Uh, but... Uh, but if, if something, if it seems to be too much or if it just flat shuts down and you have to start over, that for sure is when I uh, upload those backup videos. Uh, but see, the, the backup video will be seamless. Uh, just If you lose your stream and you don't stop the recording, then it's seamless. You know? <clears throat> You'll actually see yourself going, oh, no, what happened to my stream? You know, A lot of times I'll just, just do that. I'll just upload that. Depending on what it's like, if it seems... Okay, I'll just leave them split into two different videos, the two live streams, and if it doesn't seem I don't like it, then I'll just uh, upload the backup. <coughs> Sometimes the backup fails and it doesn't work. <laughs> and that's why I usually uh, always keep a uh, Crusader running so I can just glance over there <coughs> at Crusader. I forgot I wasn't on desktop again. Grants over there at Crusader, and I have those swap the swap sides because I'm I, I actually like, used to having it right there, and uh, newest on top, <clears throat> and there it is now. You can usually watch the file size grow, but when it, when it gets bigger than about two two and a half meg gigabytes, it takes a while to the for it to you know see you see it growing. <laughs> That's a big file, isn't it? Uh, That's why I'm filling up my backup drives <laughs> right there. So, uh, but anyway, I, it's it's pretty big, so I'm pretty sure it's still working. And my streams, every time I look in on my stream, it's okay. So, not not too worried about it. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, moral of the story is 
YouTube doesn't have, um, unless you go study those pages and you start learning enough to understand all that. Well, okay, I, it has not been but a few months since I looked at those pages of accepted file types, and it never dawned on me that it wasn't going to accept a plain old, you know, an older version of MPEG-4, you know, the MPEG. MPG is the t file extension, but it's <clears throat> MPEG is what the file, the official name of the file format is. And uh, MPEG-4 is the official name of MP4, you know, or like I was, uh, I don't know if I really pointed it out in uh, uh, Handbrake, but the file extensions can vary, especially like what I figured that out the other, you know, yesterday on YouTube. <clears throat> YouTube isn't just looking at the file extension. It won't squawk and, uh, was it M4V or something is what they were. And it would actually would not let you change it. I don't know why. Uh, it used to, I swear. Uh, most of those encoders would actually let you give it any file extension you wanted. Some some programs will squawk it, though, and won't play it. That's probably why. They want to use one that's uh, used with many players, probably. It works well. So, um, <coughs> um Heck, it could be M4V. No, that wouldn't make sense. I'm gonna say because if they use MP4, they got to pay Microsoft money. But they're using their encoder, so they're either paying them or, they're, or Microsoft's letting them use it. I don't know how they do that. But uh, um, well, they might not be using their encoder. They might have wrote their own encoder from scratch that still encodes it to those specs. I don't know. Um, anyway, you don't just go by the file extension. You need to look at, you know, you need to look inside. To know for sure, you need to look inside of the file and see what is the actual encoding of the file <clears throat> uh, to figure out if it's going to work on YouTube. And uh, luckily, you don't have to get into all that most of the time. Yeah, that threw, but that did throw me for a loop. I mean, all those, all those files. Uh, well, I said I kept saying a hundred, but actually, that was. All of my old files plus some new ones, so to get up to that 105. So it looks like it was, I've already forgot what did I say, 50, 50, 50 or 60 of, of the old videos uh, that I delete, that have been on there since 2015 working perfectly. Now they don't accept that format. So now, and, for, and they won't transfer over from, they played perfectly on Google Photos as well. Well, they played perfect, perfectly in YouTube. And, of course, now I've already deleted them. So now in order to put them back up there, uh, I'm going to have to re-encode them. Oh, this is the point I was going to get to. Now, this machine, I got don't have too many choices. This, really the only, this is the most powerful machine I've got. Well, I had. Um, but it can't do it while I'm working. I started that and then didn't finish <coughs> the story. <coughs> it can't do it while I'm working. Now, I can, you know, queue them up. And then just go to bed and let it work. It does make it right now. The air conditioners, it's you know, it's still like it's 81 right now. So the air conditioner is just barely running enough to keep me from being overheated. Like when I go to bed, I like I was hot the whole time. I'm sweating. I mean, I was sweating. Sometimes I end up doing that anyway. But with that running and my laptop running, and with the door shut, of course, I want to keep it shut day and night. Can't stand the noise of the TV and everything, <clears throat> you know, when everybody else is up. But uh, when I'm asleep or awake, I have the door shut. But all evening, I've been running. Uh, well, this thing has been running for since yes, you know, it's five in the morning now, five thirty in the morning. So I turned it on yesterday. At I'm turning it on. I started the encoding. I mean, the uh, uploading at what was it? I think I said th it turned out to be three thirty. <laughs> And so and it's still, and, and the machine was running the whole time I was up before that. So this thing has been running. <clears throat> I don't know how long it's been running now. I never run it this long. <clears throat> so uh, I'm glad it's still working good. It's still doing okay because I haven't been watching videos. Making videos, oddly enough, I guess it just doesn't use the GPU. It only uses the processor and the RAM, uh, OBS Studio. If it was working the GPU real hard, it would have already locked itself up. I wouldn't have been able to handle it. <clears throat> uh, that's how I know. But, uh, okay, but Crunch Coding Videos uses the processors, uh, probably because this thing doesn't even have a, you know, it's just got an onboard video chip. 
<clears throat> I don't think it, you know, it's not built into the CPU. It is a separate chip for the video. This is pre, you know, uh, integrated chips with GPU and CPU together. Uh, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, the, the i5 four core, I'm pretty sure. <clears throat> yeah, because it's the AMD that has come out with the wonder processor that, you know, that's supposed to, supposed to be the Intel killer. You know, they keep saying, <laughs> uh, Intel's been working on theirs. that will do that for a while now. They just didn't come out with it at theirs first, uh, what I've read. <clears throat> but, uh, um, <clears throat> I've always liked for years. I've liked, uh, AMD processors. I wanted them back. They used to be more expensive than Intel years ago, and I wanted, and they were more powerful. And I wanted them. And then Intel kind of got to be the top dog, and so it turned out what I had was good. It was better anyway, you know. <clears throat> and uh, but I knew I will say one thing. I have, I let's see. Have I? I've actually never ran an AMD like any length of time, but I built an AMD for my mom to a dual core several quite a few years ago. And uh, <clears throat> it was getting to where, you know, she needed a more powerful machine just to keep up with the Internet and everything. So I I had a motherboard that, that was a RS Rock motherboard that was the early days of 8-core uh, AMD processors. And I, won't, I, I researched them, and I decided to get an 8300 AMD. It was a 99 bucks and uh, for an 8-core. It's a big, you know, the fast, the most powerful one I could get for what I considered a reasonable price. And it did run on the, uh, and I built it up for door 27. It did run, but then the ethernet wouldn't work. And it used to work with the dual core processor that was on that, that I had in that board. And, oh, and when, and it won't work hardly. It will stream, you, you get, you get your stream started with, I uh, put OBS on there and I started using it as a backup stream, like. And sometimes I would, I would I would do things like would be streaming on this one, and then I would switch over to that one. Uh, but I forget how you did it, but I, oh, I would just stop the stream here, and then it would automatically take over, and then I'd be streaming from that machine, and I would be making my live video that way. And then if I wanted to go back to this machine, all I had to do is start OBS over here and stop it over there. Well, when I'd go back to stop it over there, it was still streaming fine, no problems. But the window, the interface was frozen, and I couldn't do anything. <laughs> And so I would have to just kill the app, you know, and it would work, but then, then you'd have to reboot the machine to get everything working right again. So anyway, I finally did a bunch of research and, uh, OBS doesn't work really well on those AMD processors. So I don't know if it works better on the newer ones. This was, I haven't tried it in months, months, maybe a year, but, uh, <clears throat> And one thing led to another, and I and I ended up buying. I'm looking at the box, a Zeus M5A 78L M Plus <clears throat> motherboard. That's perfectly now that see that 8300 uh, was not even in existence when that AS Rock motherboard was made. It will work with the earlier eight, eight cores. Well, it works with that one, just not everything doesn't work right. And I do believe that processor is the reason the Ethernet doesn't work. It, I think unless I just uh, couldn't find the driver, the right driver. I may have, I might have used the uh, NDI, NDIS or whatever it is, uh, the program that pulls the code out of a Windows driver. To I might have done that, and <clears throat> but I did, I did try to look into that, and I never got it working. So anyway, I didn't want. I want it, it's got internet because it, I had to put a PCI uh, Ethernet card in it to to get the Ethernet working at all. But it's only 100 megabits. We got a 200 down download, so I didn't want her having a ha half half speed, you know. <clears throat> so I got the motherboard, but I still. So now I got to rebuild that machine completely. Um. So. Um. And it does make. Well, there's lots of fans in that machine, so you can definitely hear it. Just like it's not as loud as the other one. I got it's louder. I've got more loud fans than that. See, it's the same exact box with different hardware inside of mine. Uh, <coughs> well, there's no point. In, well, let's do it. Uh, hang on, let me grab the camera. Uh, 
Okay. I hate just waving and pointing at things. Okay, that one is the one I was talking about earlier, 1.8 gigahertz, uh, used for years, <clears throat> and it's still really a back, you know, it's got it's kind of a backup machine. And sometimes there are some apps in that Fedora 14 system. There are actually like three operating systems on it, but <coughs> <coughs> Fedora 14 is the only one I ever really use. That box to the left of the monitor. <coughs> It uh, and it, I like it. I like the box when you turn it on. It has red lights, so it's two white strips on each side of red red LEDs and stuff. I, I like that. <clears throat> Although there's blue lights around the not buttons, power buttons, and they they blind me. I have to put something in front of them. <clears throat> They're really bright blue LEDs. But um, it's only a 1.8 gigahertz with I think about three gig of RAM. It does have a video card in it. <clears throat> it's only five twelve megabytes, but it's fine for for or 14. It's great better than what's in this one of y5 it's only 256 megabytes when that's 512 megabytes um actually that video card is well, the fan went out well the fan went out i put another fan in it and i was running it as my server for six months or something so you can see it if i can aim at it or not yeah see that video card back there it's still laying there with <coughs> Excuse me, waiting for me to, uh, I still have another fan. I bought three of them for $2 from China. I put one in mom's and I had to do a bunch of modifications to make, make it work on that one there. And, uh, <clears throat> then it only lasted. I never intended to run it, you know, it was 24 seven, but I ended up doing it cause I had trouble with my server. Well, the fans were going bad and it was making so much noise. I couldn't stand it in here. And it's just too hot in the garage in the summer to run those servers out in the garage and the router. Well, the routers, the routers were dying out there, so couldn't do that anymore. That's when I went to the Acer laptop. Anyway, I can still turn it on, and it'll and it can be a server anytime I need to. Uh, but uh, I don't even have the video card in it. It's got onboard video, but I had to go edit the etc uh, x11 files, and I didn't want to do that. So I just want to make that. I've got a heat sink laying up there. That's actually two heat sinks. That yellow one's just stuck. Has some sticky tape on it. It's just stuck to the back of that other one. That bigger black one, I want to make it a silent. <clears throat> it's not a real big job. I just haven't. Well, my I'm always struggling with my health, and I can't do the things I'd like to do. So I have a jillion things I would like to do. <clears throat> and uh, so down there, that one on the left, <clears throat> his mom's same box, <clears throat> uh, but it it was a dual core. It was a, I bought from Tiger Direct, you know, PC kit, <clears throat> and. Uh, it was a good machine. It was actually noticeably faster than any of the dual cores I had. Um, it was powerful. Uh, didn't give trouble, you know, running for all as long as you wanted to <clears throat> without any trouble. It has a uh, 512 megabyte video card and uh, 2 gig of RAM and uh, the dual core AMD. I'm trying to remember what it was. I think it's about a 2400, uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, but now, right now, it has that AS Rock motherboard with 8 gig RAM, brand new RAM. And uh, I had bought that motherboard years ago. And, uh, it's actually a really cool motherboard. It can run a, anything from a dual core to an 8 core processor in it. And it has four RAM slots, but only you can either do two DDR2 or two DDR3s. So I've got, I've had it in both configurations right now. It's got two DDR3s, 8 gig. That's a max it'll handle, though. And uh, the and it will uh, and all that story I was talking about with OBS on it and everything that's what all that stuff I ran into with that um, it would have been cool if all everything worked like you know it should um, I put Fedora twenty seven on it and I was you know getting ready to kind of put all the little ins and you know. Ins and outs, bells and whistles in the software for mom, and then realized that just not going to be good enough. <clears throat> so I bought that motherboard right there. Um, <clears throat> I think I, I don't remember what I paid for now, but I think it was seventy-five to eighty-five dollars for it. Okay, what well, well, the prices? It was close to Christmas, and they were going. Actually, they the funny thing is sometimes you know you always expect to get deals around Christmas. Uh. And it actually went up by like 15, 20 bucks. Uh, everybody was, you know, and I've, that, you know, they're not making these anymore. Um, 
but it's what it's one of the best. You know, I didn't want some super expensive thing. It's it's not a gaming rig or anything like that. Uh, so anyway, um, it. Um, I watched the prices go up and down, up and down until I finally said, "Okay, I'll get it at." probably 75 or something. Uh, I think I waited till after Christmas, or maybe up in January. I think I bought it like, I can't remember exactly. I think I bought it around January of this year. But anyway, <clears throat> so I need to, you know, rebuild that machine. Put the, I'll be putting my new memory, the new 8300 processor in it and everything. Get her system. And then hopefully everything will be good. I uh, won't have any trouble with the, uh, I tried to make sure that the, I didn't pay any, really paying attention that that um that as rock has a real tech which is one of the most common chips is real tech but it's a newer version of the real tech um ethernet chip and um uh, that's where you know where i got into trouble uh found out that's a little harder you know a little little less harder easy little harder to find the drivers for uh this uh I can't remember what Ethernet chips on this one, but <coughs> I did do a lot of research, and so I think everything's going to be good. Make sure it would work with Linux, you know, and all that, because I'll be putting Fedora. Now I'll be putting Fedora 30 on it. I was going to be putting Fedora 29, but now it's going to be Fedora 30. So, uh, yeah, it's really taking me 100 times longer. I figured it would take me a month, two months at the max, to get it all set up and ready, and, uh, well, I Fedora 27 to 4, Fedora 30, you do the math. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> so, that's sad. But, uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to say while I was down there, that little blue and white and black, black and blue and white machine, that is the uh, my very first machine I ever built, uh, Pentium 4. And actually, it still runs just like a top. There's something, oh, yeah, the... Uh, it was a strange one little thing that was odd and bad about it is the uh what was it i think it was the cradle that holds the cpu down it just had some metal tabs that went through the motherboard and they were bent over and they came loose i don't know if it was a cpu or what it was i can't even remember now or maybe it was a yeah i think that's what it was and i fixed it by sticking Hey, you know, straightening out some paper clips and bending them in the right shoe shape, putting them through there and twisting them like a twisty. And that's fine. I just made sure it was not anywhere where it could hit the case, you know, short anything out or anything. You know, if it was to move, that it couldn't short anything out. But, and I, I fixed that years ago. <clears throat> it's held, you know, of course, it's, as long as it didn't short, touch anything and short anything out, you're fine. It's, it's really strong, you know, paper clips, pretty strong. But uh, yeah, it was it was letting the CPU come loose. The CPU cooler, it was it was the CPU cooler hold down brackets is what it was. Not the actual CPU, but the CPU cooler. That's what it was. I knew there was something wrong about the way I was saying that. Um, but an odd thing, and this was it's it's made by First International Computer, and they I really wanted that one because it said made in America, you know. And of course, they explain, you know. Uh, they do, you know, they bought, they everything they could manufacture here, they did, but they bought parts from, but they weren't China parts. I guess they were mostly bought in Japan. Uh, well, there's no part, no, this was just before or during the time of the bad caps, bad caps syndrome days, bad capacitors, everything ended up with bad capacitors. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this board, nothing wrong with the capacitors on it. Uh <clears throat> And um, oh, and it's you know one. Well, it's the oldest machine I bought ever bought. You know, I've got some older machines in the garage that were given me, but <clears throat> it's the oldest machine I bought. <clears throat> but uh, um, the battery holder instead of laying down flat like mo the the BIOS battery, it's the, the little uh, they call them di uh, yeah, dime cell batteries or something. What they call them? You know, they're about the size of a quarter. Uh, <clears throat> Um, instead of laying down like most of them, it stood up and it was right in the way of, you see those, you see the floppy drive, the white thing, and then below it, it's actually open because there's a hard drive in there and I left the, the cover off so that air could go through and cool the hard drives because they did get, I have four 
hard drive, at least four hard drives in there. I don't think it's five. I think it's four. I've got a CD, DVD, floppy, <coughs> and uh, four hard drives in there. Or I did. I'm not. You know, I used to have four hard drives. There's probably one hard drive in there now. Uh, but anyway, um, I think it's got two 80 millimeter fans in it, like one in the case and one in the uh, power supply. My, yeah, I think that's all it has in it. But anyway, with that open, it cools fine. It did when there was more hard drives. <clears throat> but uh, um, the battery, instead of laying down, it's standing up, and it put it right. And I was always taking the hard drives in and out. And so oh, it finally one day uh, just broke loose on one side. And all it needs is to be soldered. And I thought, well, you know what? It's been a pain since the day I got it. And I thought, well, I've got some old blown up motherboards out there I saved for parts. That's where I got that that yellow heat sink up there. <clears throat> it was off a of AMD that I blew up. <laughs> um, first AMD I ever got, my friend neighbor gave it to me. And it was old and, you know, it's like 1.66 gigahertz. But... Uh, Anyway, uh, I was going to take one, and, and there's I've got one on old Dell. This right here, that's my power supply amp. That's not a computer. That's got two power supplies and two car amps in it. That's my that's my audio amp. <clears throat> uh, it used to ha it used to be a Dell computer, and a lightning killed it. We had a, a lightning strike one year that that killed a, several of our electronics things, <coughs> but. Uh, but um, anyway, I'm not going to tell them more. I was going to go and show that <laughs> that heat sink, that yellow. That's cut in half. Half of it's on my uh, Raspberry Pi processor. Uh, I put a, I, have you ever heard of Raspberry Pi single board computer? Well, I put it in a box of <laughs> a box of an old HD TV tuner that got killed by the lightning, and I used that box as a case for it. And uh, I had a fan in there, but the fan wore out after a year or so of daily, you know, being on 24-7. I had it hooked up to the TV for with uh, XBMC on it for, <coughs> to have web video <coughs> on the TV in the living room. And, oh, that's my first router I ever bought the Netgear. That's not wireless. That's just wired. <coughs> but it um, still works. It's just it can't handle as much data as the new ones. Um, anyway, the battery, uh, I'm sure I can get a battery, LA down battery case out of one of those, or just solder that one back in it, like in the uh, Pentium 4. But what happens is since the battery is not, <clears throat> it's I don't know if it's a positive or negative lead, it just came loose, you know, the solder joint broke. Uh, if you unplug it, as long as it's plugged in, it's fine. But if it uh, gets unplugged or the power goes out to the house, which has been happening more and more in the last five years or more, um, it loses all the BIOS settings. And so when you boot it up, you have to go through the BIOS and set all the settings again. And I don't use the defaults. I have certain settings I want. So it's kind of a pain. <clears throat> so anyway, another thing I need to, I really want to fix so, why am I telling you all that? I have no clue. Let me put this back where... Uh, when I get on a roll of talking, I guess... Uh, I guess that's what I, I... I either don't talk at all or I talk for hours. I guess that's the way I am. <clears throat> so, um... Anyway, I don't know. Just talking about all this video stuff just reminds me of all the machines I've had over the years, and what, and and all the you know the audio and video work I've done on them. I haven't even touched on uh, recording, and well, I didn't do. Um, I have two albums that I recorded over the years. Some first recordings I did on uh, four track reel to reel recorders. I was actually taking a class in audio, you know, and. A audio video class at a junior college and I recorded my first song there with some friends that came in and played the music and I sang and wrote the lyrics and uh, all Christian rock or 
Christian rock or folk or, you know, uh, type songs and uh, different styles. <clears throat> but um, anyway, over the years, I finally put, in 2002, I put an album together and, and made a CD. But I did all that work on, most of it on that Pentium 4, uh, you know, <clears throat> and, uh, but, and, and converting, you know, uh, you know, analog into digital and all that sort of thing <clears throat> and uh in 05 then uh well the rest of the recordings there's a guy a friend a guy that i met a friend that uh a fantastic musician he plays drums bass guitar uh keyboards <clears throat> a little bit um i wouldn't hardly let him do keyboards because i don't i never really used to care for keyboards much but uh he had a home recording studio <laughs> And the first recordings we did was on um, ADAT. That's a digital, but it's two-channel recorder, uh, kind of a digital cassette, really. <clears throat> and uh, he had a high-quality cassette deck, and he had a multi-channel recorder, but it was out being worked on or something. Or I don't know if he ever got it fixed. It, it quit working right. <clears throat> so we recorded our several songs. Um, and we would we call it bouncing tracks. This original way they used to do it before there was such a thing as a four track, you know. <clears throat> so you record two tracks or one track, and then you play back the first one, and then you play live to the next one, and you keep building it and building up all your layers of music. <clears throat> That's how we did that. And, of course, I saved CDs. He would burn me CDs. What did, no, what did he? Oh, no, let's see. Oh, then he got a, I can't remember, I'm going on and on. So anyway, I kept, you know, saved the recordings over the years and uh, ended up really getting into, you know, uh, as I said, I learned how to do audio and video, digital audio and video for the internet as it was being invented. And so, <clears throat> of course, still to this day, a lot of people still like CDs, so I made, uh, built my websites, put my music on the websites and I just uh, offered them for free and then if but if you wanted a CD, you could order one. Now nobody ever ordered a CD. So <laughs> I don't even have any I'd have to make some CDs or order or have some made if anybody wanted one. <clears throat> but uh, you know, I haven't made a CD in years. I have all my masters and all my files, you know, when I could make them, but I got all into printing. Well, I didn't have a, you know, they had to, uh, they actually were a big deal for a while and then they kind of quit making them, but they had laser CD burners where you could burn a label on the CD. So, but you had to have the right kind of CD for it to work, you know, to work. He had some, uh, they were white. The ones he got, I think you could get different, you could get silver ones, but he had white ones and you could burn a label onto it. It could, you could, uh, Burn the music on one side and the label on the other. <clears throat> it's pretty cool. And uh, he gave me some of my copies of our songs as we were recording them on those CDs, even though he didn't take the time to burn a label on them. Just what he had, you know. But um, anyway, he this was later. Uh, first, this was he had a first house. The first house when I first knew him, uh, he had a studio, complete studio built up in a room. He had a, a booth, you know built in there and everything and then he bought built a new house had a new house built and then he just uh, he just put all his gear in one of the t bedrooms upstairs it was a two-story house and uh, it worked just as well but uh, um, but you know instead of like well what he would do is if I was singing I would go out into the you know where the mics and everything were and he would be in the control booth running all the gear and, and then on the first house What's good about that is if the gear's making any, well, the older gear did make some noise, you know. But then in the new house, he was using a Mac computer and a 30-channel Mackie mixer, you know, and stuff. And, well, the computer doesn't make, that computer didn't make enough noise to be any trouble in the recording. So we were just both sitting there in that room, you know, right close to the board. And, of course, he had his drum. He had electronic drums. He liked to use electronic drums. I never really liked electronic drums, but uh, he did have some acoustic drums. And one song we did... They were down in the garage, though, and he really just kind of used them to jam with some friends or something. <clears throat> but I talked him into, uh, we, um, I guess he, I don't know if I, let's see. 
Yeah, I can see had a, I saw a snake laying there, an audio snake, and it was a really long, 150 foot or something. And anyway, <clears throat> talked him into, uh, and I brought some more mics and stuff. And uh, anyway, we did one song where, uh, you know, we did all the, we had to do each section separately because he played the instruments and I did the singing. And of course, sometimes I would be singing. If I wasn't singing, uh, then I would be watching the mixer and starting and stopping the recording and stuff on the computer, you know. He did all the setup. I really didn't ever get to play with his Mac setup to learn really how to use it. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, to, like, get into the details. But uh, anyway, when we did the drums, he was down there in the he was down there in the uh, garage, and I was up there in the second floor, you know, and we talked back and forth through, uh, you know, channels on the snake, you know, through. He had headphones, and I had headphones, and or I, I guess I was listening to him over the. He had, you know, studio monitors. I probably listened to him over that. But anyway, and I plugged in a what we call a talkback mic. When you're mixing live sound, I used to always like to use a talkback mic where I could talk to the stage people without having to scream, you know. <clears throat> Tell them which me, you know, which me, which instrument I wanted them to play and what I was trying to check and all that. <clears throat> and. Um, Um, so anyway, in 05, I put all that together. We did that and I put all that together and I, and I kind of, I actually added some backup vocals to one of the songs and stuff. And, uh, oh, speaking of, uh, losing your stream, my router automatically reboots at six in the morning. It's doing it right now. Great. So, uh, <clears throat> it may not have killed my internet connection, but it looks like it killed my camera stream. It, used, it, it happened so fast that uh, let me see what's going on here i was going to do it on the de laptop and just look at it but i saw that my camera froze and uh what will probably happen is there'll be that glitch i was talking about Dang, damn it. i had not thought about that it's the first time i've been making a since i, I didn't used to do that but well, when i start especially when, when i started running that uh camera as a surveillance camera 24 7 I knew that router needed to be rebooted regularly, regularly. So I set it to uh, reboot automatically. Yeah, it's back up. So let's look at the live dashboard and see if my stream is down or if it didn't take too long. Uh, it looks like it's offline. <clears throat> yeah, I noticed earlier today <coughs> that... Uh, when I kept stopping my stream, it used to take 30 seconds, to almost a minute, for the stream to say offline. And uh, I noticed it was happening, you know, it seemed like 20, 25 seconds. But uh, <clears throat> they must have changed that. That was a default on YouTube, I think. And, yeah, because I, I haven't changed anything. It wasn't to do with OBS. It was to do with YouTube. And I haven't changed anything. So they evidently changed the default. I actually liked that. It was really nice that if you didn't go down for too long, you know, it had to be down for 30 seconds, around right around 30 seconds for you to actually lose your stream. So, uh, <clears throat> there's no point in me... Uh, I'm trying to think, should I start my stream again or what? What I'm, I, what I'm saying, there's really, I don't think there's any point in it because, uh, let's see if my camera, only thing is I don't think my camera's going to recover. Yeah, it's frozen. So, uh, right where it was, I would have to close OBS and open it back up. Used to, you used to have enough time to close. If OBS jacked up and you lost a camera or something, you could close OBS, open it back up, restart it, and still not lose your live stream uh, if you were pretty quick about it. So, uh, 
you know, I've been needing to quit, and I've been rambling and rambling. So um, now and either that stream gets cut like that, or I'm going to have to upload this video. That's so ironic. And I sat there and talked and talked about having a stream interrupted. Um, sure enough, it gets interrupted by my own design because if I'd have been paying attention and realized, oh, you know, my router reboots at 6 in the morning, uh, I've had the last hour here to go in there and turn that feature off for today, you know. I don't know if it would have worked, though, because I think when you turn that feature on and off, it may make the router reboot just to save those settings. There's some settings in that router, that D-Link, that it will automatically reboot it when you hit save. I don't know if that's one or not. <clears throat> it doesn't ask you. It just does it on some of them. And then I think on others, it may ask you or tell you, well, it's not going to take effect till you reboot it. You know. But um, that really woke me up to how badly I need to just quit. I'm starving now. I'm tired and everything else. I have all the things I don't want to do, and that's spend another. See, this is a long video, and so... It's too long. Three hours and 45 minutes, but it, it'll take minimum an hour to upload this video if I upload the backup. So, uh, stream offline, streamed live three minutes ago. So, go to my videos. I should show that there's a finished stream up there. And but you have to go to live, mm -hmm. and that still freaks me out every time I go there. Oh, where's it at? What's going on? So there it is, and I'll have to kind of look it over and see what to name it and all that stuff. I spelled that wrong. It's supposed to be L I polymer, not L Y. <laughs> Maybe I should leave it like liar, 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 pencil, fire, battery. <laughs> How funny. Okay, so I'm gonna go. Um, but I'm almost certain. And the funny thing is, I was reading off the battery. Let me look at it and see. To try to get that spelling right. Battery's still swelled up tighter than a balloon. <clears throat> I couldn't think of what tighter than it was. Well, I started the sentence and didn't know how I was going how to finish it. Uh, it's all over this darn thing and I can't find it it's always the big, probably the biggest text on there or something T-L-I yeah T-L-I dash polymer P-O-L-Y-M-E-R I got the polymer right so uh, <clears throat> glad I saw that I didn't see it when I did it. I thought it looked funny. I really, I, but I couldn't figure out why it looked funny. But I was looking at the battery at I L I and I typed L Y. I don't know why. Why? I don't know why I typed Y. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go and uh, whatever I was talking about, I'm sure it wasn't too important. Uh, whenever I got inter so rudely interrupted by my router rebooting. So, we'll talk to you later next time. I've uh, got lots of videos I want to make and things I want to do, but uh, we'll see what, what to do and when to do it. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>
But it's still normally it says stopping stream very shortly, and then it says you know, joke. I think it changes to start stream. <clears throat> but see, I'm still recording the video, the backup video, and it won't stop till I stop it. I set that that way on purpose so that if I accidentally click the wrong thing, or if, uh, well, actually, I thought that if the, you lost your connection, it would just go automatically back to start stream. You know, it didn't. <laughs> That's I think that's different. Yeah, it uh, it might have been OBS. It was automatically reconnecting instead of YouTube doing that. <clears throat> I'd have to look in the settings and see. Now maybe the maybe the try to reconnect is in there and uh, it's not working. So anyway, I'll find out. All right, bye bye.